This is the One Piece Podcast, episode 462 for the week of Monday, March 27th, 2017. My name is Zach. And my name is Ed. And on today's show, we have very special guest translator for One Piece in Weekly Shonen Jump. We have the well-rested Stephen Paul with us. How's it going, Stephen? <laughs> Yeah, um, well, you'll have me for at least one segment, I think, um, but I may need to bounce after we do the manga, so enjoy it while you can. <laughs> uh, we also have on today's episode, YouTube sensation, Roger Space joins us again. Hey, Roger, how's it going? Pretty good. I did a Reddit AMA this morning on the One Piece Reddit, and it was I a lot of fun it. answering yeah. people's questions and, uh, and seeing what they thought of Jewelry Bonnie and all their theories, so <laughs> it, was, it was a blast. <laughs> Uh, th yeah, that was that was really cool. We, we did an AMA a while back at this point. But Years I, ago at this point. But the thing is, our piece together segment is basically an AMA every single week. <laughs> yeah. If you think about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's that's cool. Glad uh, glad things are going well over there. Uh, we also have our editorial writer Jill. How's it going, Jill? Hey, good. It's all right. We've got some sun here in SoCal, which is somehow oddly um, different than usual. I don't understand what's going on. Um, yeah, we, yep. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> we all have, to be fair, which is perfect for what we're doing in this episode. But first, we have, one, we more, we have one more guest with us. We have Kelly, our merchandise reporter. How's it going, Kelly? Great. How are you? I, I'm doing, no one asked me that ever at the top of the show. <laughs> well, I'm starting a new tradition. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I'm doing very well. Thank you. Uh, s s but I could tell you what we're doing on today's episode. Uh, we have our manga recap for chapter 860, 10 o'clock start, so I hope you start listening to that segment at 10 o'clock a.m., because that's what it tells you. I don't know. Uh, we also have an anime recap this week. Uh, Sam will be joining us for that, and probably some piece together. And Ed, what do you have? What What's the name of that episode? It's A Hungry Front, Luffy and the Navy Rookies. And uh, next week is the last filler episode, so... Oh, we'll see where we go after that. And that's episode 781 this week, right? Maybe. Actually, uh, no, yeah, 781, it, I'm sorry, it's the Implacable 3. The Big Chase After the Straw Hats is the name of the episode. I messed that up. Well, it happens to all of us. Even you, Ed, <laughs> once in a blue moon. <laughs> These episodes, they're all right, but... Um, yeah, I think they're pretty good. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll yeah. talk about it, yeah. The Implacable 3 is a pretty good name for a spaghetti western, I have to say. I would watch that. <laughs> It's an all right band name, too, for like a folk group, because a couple of these characters are named after like rock and rollers, Frank oh, Zappa boy. and John Bonham. What is this, like a JoJo's like uh, <laughs> anime arc where they name them after actual rock musicians? There's, there's, well, we'll get to that later. Yeah, there's a lot of JoJo's we'll probably be talking about today. Uh, we Starbs. also. We also have our uh, Piece Together segment where we take your questions, comments, theories. That's going to be at the end of the show, so we hope you enjoy that. But before we start, Kelly, there's some merch news, and it's to a kind of different demographic than I think One Piece merch usually goes to. Yeah, definitely. Um, we saw the launch last week on March 23rd of a high-end couture line from uh, Japanese designer Samantha Tavasa. I may be pronouncing that wrong, but it's essentially uh, a bunch of fairly expensive handbags, um, some wallets, clutches, and charms. And I managed to get my mitts on one of the bags and I'm hoping when I go to Japan this week, I will be able to get a couple more things. But a really cool pop-up shop opened uh, in Harajuku. It's going to be open until April 9th. And uh, we just put an article up on the site. But you can take a look. And it's this gigantic, bright pink building with a chopper out front. And that reminds me, I believe a Mugiwara store is opening up in Shanghai in China. Um, That's correct. Which I think there's already been one in... Um, Oh, Thailand. 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 Thailand, that's what right? it is. Yeah, I yep. knew it was an, it was a, one in an internationally, and Taiwan. Yep, uh, this is the third one. one. This is the third one, and it's opening this summer. Big deal. Mm -hmm. If you're listening in China, which I don't know if you're able to get us, but if you do, uh, yeah, please please check that out in Shanghai. Um, that's super cool, I think. Now, we got a lot to talk about today, so I think we should get into it. Let's start with our manga recap. Are you guys ready? Oh, yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. This is the manga recap for chapter 860, 10 o'clock start. Ed, what's going on? 
Uh, what is going on on the front page here? <laughs> well, Z- Zach, this is, again, a reason to be okay with no cover story. Because this is Crocodile holding an umbrella over a puppy shivering in the rain. Mm. Suggested by Hiyumori from Hyoko, which is near Osaka. So is that puppy also crying? I can't tell if it's just the rain. I think Looks it like is. It, yeah. Crocodile's so, I mean... so sweet and tender. <laughs> I mean, crocodile's terrifying, so the puppy's probably crying in fear. Let's be real. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or it could just it could just be the fact that it's just a little pug. They always look like they're crying, the little puggies. <laughs> Except for that one in Men in Black, he was an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually even liked the little one in Men in Black too. <laughs> I've always wanted to hear Steven's puppy voice, and mm-hmm. so I'm for that yeah. reason alone, I am happy about this cover page. Um, I think a lot of people are now wondering if this pug will be canon in the story with Crocodile next time we see him. Oh, and you know I what? Hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I don't know why. You retweeted, I, Zach. You retweeted some fan art. I because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I just find anything related. There's just like fan fiction with this cover story already from Japan or Korea. <laughs> and it's just, I don't know, for some reason it makes me crack up. And that is why I retweeted it. There's no way. Normally I would not retweet that. You are corrected. Um, it's not and, even really that weird considering Sengoku has a goat. Like, this is fine. Him having no. a little pug puppy is cute. Yeah, but Crocodile's out in the rain, which is like his biggest weakness. That's the weird part. He must yeah, love that pug a lot. He it's must. The- mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. every One Piece character has like a quirk or a soft side. I mean, even some of the hardened villains have that. Like, uh, 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 Sakazuki tends to his bonsai trees, for example. So it's nice to see that Crocodile likes pugs for some reason. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think that's just about as much as we could digest that. Uh, we have yeah. a, we have a, probably one of the craziest One Piece chapters in a while, so we should probably get straight into it, Ed. It's happening! Anyway, uh, we start Eastern Inlet, Whole Cake Island. Hey, where do you think you're going, girl? Yeah, we're leaving the country. Sorry, Peckhams, you'll have to wait until someone finds you. <laughs> Aladdin. Oh, man, Aladdin. That guy. Uh, and Peckham sort of loses his... Geez, this is the shit over. They, like, they, what's the big idea? Does I, I did not know about this? I did not realize until just now they left him snacks and water. Yep. On the side Yeah, there. a couple of, you know, onigiri. He just has to bend over and, like... At the at the waist and pick it up with his mouth. <laughs> they gave him a straw for the water. It's fine. Yeah, but the the rice balls. It's like an ice cream eating contest. <laughs> Bam, hands behind your back. Um, yeah, <laughs> Aladdin's like. I certainly hope Big Mom doesn't know about this. Like, <laughs> if if she does, we're dead. <laughs> um, that, yeah, basically, it's, that's that's her saying. If you leave, you die. Um, and Jinbei was grateful, you know, and we flash to Jinbei in the past, saying it's a sheer miracle that I was able to hear Peckham's story just now. I cannot imagine the plan to assassinate Big Mom will achieve its effect, but now we know that Mama has her own plot to assassinate her, and that is really interesting that he has no faith in the plan to assassinate Big Mom. It's interesting. Yeah, it, mm. I mean, this. I think this is happening before uh, you know, they had the whole planning mm. meeting with, with Luffy and everything, right. so He's maybe he wasn't... Yeah. Right, maybe he wasn't sure about uh, all of the participation involved, but um, he's got doubts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, but I guess getting Luffy to buy into it is the part that makes it maybe work. Anyway, um, so yeah, again, flashback. This is if Luffy's group hears about it, they'll doubtless risk great danger to save Sanji. I cannot stand by and do nothing when their lives are in danger. So I will assist them. In other words, I will be fomenting rebellion and betraying Big Mom, with the implication that I'm going to die doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he says that he did the honorable thing first. He went face to face to request leave of Big Mom's service, but he had to change course because the roulette wheel that she has has numbers on it to indicate the number of fellow sacrifices that had to be made along with me. I think at the roulette board superimposed or, or behind uh, behind Jimmy. It's a really cool shot. Supra like imposed? Sub sub imposed? <laughs> sure. I don't know. <laughs> Background. <laughs> yes, behind. <laughs> Uh, Big Mom's price for leaving went beyond the bounds of my one life. It was unreasonable and dishonorable. Luffy and Jinbei would not do that to his crew. So, 
we go to the next page. I love here how Jim Bay, you, you just get Jim Bay's personality kind of just boil down here. Honor, most important thing. Um, for anyone who's a Star Trek fan, he is the wharf of the Star Trek crew. Uh, <laughs> all he cares about is honor, and that's it. And he that's all you really need. Um, also, loyalty, respect. Yes. Uh, but uh, I also, check out the, the Fishman Pirates, their, their ship there, the, the Goldfish ship. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I don't think that's... Well, obviously, it's not the same one from Fisher Tiger since that one yeah. got destroyed. Um, so, I, I love but any... It, it was created to be a replica, probably. It looks extremely similar. Mm. And I hope we got an SBS question about the name or other little details mm. about that because that's stuff I'm interested in. Also glad to know what the numbers meant on the roulette wheel. That was kind of hanging. So let's keep moving, though. Uh, Jim Bay continues and says, Look, I want you to all flee to safety because, again, if you leave, you die. But if you flee... While everyone is, you know, worried about the, uh, while the hors d'oeuvre ships, which I, I like that name a lot from uh, <laughs> Big Mom, are escorting the guests, uh, there will not be as much security within Mom's territory. And so if something then happens at the party, which we all know something's about to happen, um, <clears throat> all the attention will be focused inward. And so that will be your chance to escape. And Aladdin says, look, we've been prepared for this. Should have come. We want you to be free. And Jim Bay's like, yeah, I know that already. And <laughs> Aladdin's like, no, you don't. Is, I know that, what is, that, is that his voice? <laughs> yeah, this is all their fishmen have like a kind of weird inflection. Ed, I know you don't really know about it. Just, <laughs> <clears throat> Aladdin's like, yeah, I, I know what you're planning. Go out in a blaze of glory. No, don't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> And then Chippe says, um, let's say, for example, one day I join the Straw Hat crew. So we're taking a hypothetical here, I guess. Um, he said he would lay down his life to protect his captain, Straw Hat Luffy. And the distinction, Aladdin, is whether I do it now or later. So the hypothetical is whether it, when it happens, not if it happens. Um, and on the next side of the page, Aladdin ellipses thinks about it. So it's some serious thought. And he says, fine, do as you will. He takes his trident and goes away and says, just make every effort to protect yourself. Got that? So Aladdin cares about his captain and says, we'll take the ship back to Fishman Island and says, you're worried about Ryugu kingdom too, aren't you? And Jinbei agrees. He is. And he apologizes for having to, Essentially be so selfish, kind of that same thing Luffy and Sanji had, had said in the past. Look how offended Jinbei is at what, what uh, Aladdin says there. Like, he drops the sweat, his eyes are wide open, he's sort of like, oh, of course I am. Of course I'm worried about the about the Ryuga kingdom. It's it's a, it's an interesting reaction. Like, he's he, like he, I think he, I mean, he understands how, be, how selfish he's being. And you know, he's, he's always sort of been the stoic one during this arc, even like when they were getting Brooke back from uh, Big Mom. He was the only one that was stone faced. Everybody else looked scared. Mm-hmm. God, now I can't unsee Jimbe as Worf. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, I hope someone does a mashup of that. Uh, anyway, so he says, "I'm sorry, I have to do this." And, and Aladdin's like, "How many decades have we known each other? Knock it off. Let us meet again, Jimbe." And we get that panel there of Praline looking on as Jim as uh, Aladdin is deep in thought, not creepy. She- she is getting her Fujosh on right there. She's shipping those guys. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I like. Um, I just love but, how big she is. She's so big. Yeah, yeah that's great. Um, they're a great couple. Um, anyway, <laughs> we get uh, a long shot of the ship, which anyone have a good name for this ship while we wait for one? No. Anyway. Uh, they the Fisher Tuger. The Fisher Tuger. <laughs> <laughs> okay I'll write, I'll write that down um it says let's get ready to sail and everyone's like yeah let's go and peckham's just like no get back here um we go to the next page roger yes and we finally see what's going on on whole cake chateau and reiju comes back along with all the vin smokes and uh yonji asks where were you reiju and reiju responds you were partying all night weren't you of course i needed to get a quieter room to sleep in and uh, I think it's Ichiji, right, who says, give a grown woman her privacy, you dolt. And uh, Judge, as he's walking down the hallway, says, let's go. The ceremony's on the roof, I hear. So everyone's finally together, and the brothers are still making fun of Sanji, saying, ah, he hasn't run away, has he? <laughs> and uh, another one of Big Mom's subordinates says, the bride and groom are both ready for their big day. But Reiju is very clearly 
worried for Sanji and she thinks, what is he, what is he thinking? Sanji knows what's going to happen to all of us. So, uh, you know, Roger, I, I love the idea that Ichiji is thinking further ahead than Yonji of like, well, I know what I was doing last night. I was off trying to get some. So obviously my sister, who is part of my family, would tr- be doing the same thing just far right. away from us. Right, right. <laughs> no, that, that, that is Niji, not, not Ichiji. Oh, Niji. Oh, Niji. Yeah. Okay, Niji. Ichiji is the quiet one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, and then we finally cut to Whole Cake Island, no pun intended, with cutting the cake. And uh, <clears throat> let me break out my singing voice. Here we go. We have all the homies singing around dancing, and they're going, it's time. And then you have another tree, and it's going, it's time. And then we see this cool pork pig carriage rushing down the street, and another another homie is singing, it's time for Mama's Tea Party. The pork wagon is in a race. They're very late. They must make haste. The big guests have arrived. And then all the little homies are singing and dancing, and it's just, it's a good old time. Hashtag we Disney. So Slam on the brakes. <laughs> Boo. Um, you should probably make a fart noise when it stops, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds wow. about right. I want to yeah. adopt that pig really badly. The the pig was really cool. I'm not really sure what uh, what the distinction is between the, uh, the Porks wagon and the Calicoach. Um, or if they, they just have a bunch of different animals, but, uh, I, this is again, something that I took forever to, to come up with a, a, a translation for, and I had a bunch of alternatives. Um, and I, I gave them the two final options that I gave them were Porks wagon and Rolls Roinks. Um, <laughs> oh, and, uh, oh, oh. oh my but, God. but I had like so many, I, I was, I had like the, the, uh, Salamazine, and the um, like the Hamazine, the Kielbasa. Um, oh, that one's good too. I, I really want the the one that I was the happiest with, but it didn't work conceptually. Was the Hambulance just because it was so simple? <laughs> but uh, it just it didn't work. Like I was hoping that oh maybe maybe there's some like alternate you know uh, like less specific version of the word ambulance that doesn't necessarily refer to like hospital patients but no it's it's pretty pretty strict on that so um yeah i put a lot of work into that one well done um, um and we will be releasing uh roger's track on vinyl uh in 2056 <laughs> right. uh, we were talking that. about this before we recorded and i was shocked that you did not plan for this to go along with uh we can fly from peter pan because it lines up perfectly Hmm. <laughs> Stephen's <laughs> reaction. Oh yes, uh, yes. All according to Keikaku. Yes. <laughs> Translator's note: Keikaku means plan. <laughs> There'll be no more pigs for carriages in this comic. <laughs> Stephen, you have uh, quite a page to go through, so I'm going to let you do that. Oh boy. Um. Yeah. So here we go. Here are the the figures from the underworld, as promised. The uh, the exalted guests of the tea party, and um. Man, I, I felt like I was um, I felt like I was looking at block E of the Corita Coliseum when I saw this page because of all the um, all the weirdos. Uh, and he did kind of an interesting like framing here where th- there's really just one illustration, but then he has all the panels of their their faces and their names um, kind of arranged around it. Um, so, yeah, this this group of, of people is is walking along and the uh, the first we have is uh, the Lone Shark King, God of Fortune, Dufeld, who was uh, mentioned previously in the in the last chapter. Uh, this and this guy definitely has B-word fat, right? I mean, the way he talks. He looks, yeah. He's um, got no neck. Yeah. To be fair, yeah. a lot of people in One Piece don't have a neck. Or a really yeah. long neck. Although he, so. does have, he does have really big ears that look like game pads. Um <laughs> If, which, uh, oh my goodness, weird. I did not notice that until you said that. <laughs> I mean, if I could take the Star Trek references further, he looks exactly like a Ferengi. I mean... yeah, Well, the teeth, for sure, yeah. Maybe Oda just got into Deep Space Nine <laughs> recently, and he's He's putting... got Joy-Cons. Yeah, um, but he, he is the rare character who actually has kind of a bit of an Osaka style, uh, like a Kansai Ben, um, which is notable because um, the Osaka area is known for its uh booming uh shall we say like less than ethical 
uh, financing businesses. There are lots of loan sharks in Osaka, um, stereotypically so. And so he um, clearly that's how he has made a name for himself. And um, he is uh, as he's walking along, he is yelling, hey, who invited you, Undertaker? And uh, next to him is a, uh, a a very nice looking lady, kind of a, a bit of a flapper outfit here. Um, and she is queen of the pleasure district, Stussy. Uh, I don't see the cool S, but um, I'm sure I'm sure she's got something with that uh, that logo on it. And uh, she says, oh, stop being so fussy. And if you if you like, you can imagine that she's pronouncing it Fusey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she said she asks, is an undertaker not allowed to celebrate a wedding? And the undertaker they're talking to is uh, this uh, funny guy who almost looks like like Cat Viper with a mask on or something because he's got the big mane of hair and uh, in like a big old neck beard or something. Um, and that is the the major undertaker drug piccolo and um that was a weird choice from oda because actually the katakana for his name is a uh, drug pieclo uh pieclo and uh, i i almost want to say that maybe they just like did misspelled it i mean there's a lot of names on this page mm-hmm. that it may have supposed to be p-i-e-c-l-o um which i believe is probably supposed to be like a combination of piero and clown um because he, you know, he kind of has the the look with the the star eyes and stuff. And it's interesting with his laugh, the which is kind of reminiscent of the Grand Guignol, which is a theater in Paris where they did all sorts of uh, like lurid and also kind of vulgar comedic plays in the sort of late eighteen hundreds. Hmm. I loved this chapter when I first read through it, and I'm loving it even more that we're going through all these little details because, like, mm-hmm. it just makes me like these characters even more. What's with the 49S on his shirt? I'm not sure. You know, I gave it a little bit of thought, but I, I never came to a conclusion, and um, I didn't. I didn't look to see like on the internet if there mm. were Japanese blogs who had uh, broken. I mean, it, it could be just because he carries a sickle, like Shikyu. I don't know. Possibly. Possibly. What's yeah. on his uh, armband? The armband is the kanji for death. Um, so well, yeah. yeah, and then she is is also uh, the number four is also uh, kind of a shorthand for death. Um, it's an unlucky number in in many uh, like Chinese and Japanese cultures and stuff. Um, and he's an undertaker, so um, there's um, there's a bit of a uh, of a theme going on there. And he is uh, he's biting back at Dufeld, saying a bold words coming from a man who stinks of blood. Um, so clearly, uh, Dufeld is, he, he's not just in financing. He's, uh, he, he has, there are shadier aspects of that. And, uh, and then next we have, I mean, it's not a competition, I know, but this guy clearly wins. Uh, we have <laughs> oh, yeah. president Agreed. of yeah. the, the world economic journal, big news, Morgans <laughs> and oh. big news. Yeah, it's it's perfect. It's just amazing. So this is obviously the uh, this is the newspaper that um, was referenced with the uh, the Germa strip, the Sora Hero of the Sea. So, so is um, he like the head news coup? I mean, that's what that's came to my mind. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, he's, yeah totally. So like he's a bird. In, yes, in a world with the news coup, it makes perfect sense that uh, a bird would own the uh, the big newspaper. And um, Th- this yeah, makes, no, it's... this makes news coups even better to me because it's not like we're enslaving uh, birds oh, right. to deliver no, I mean, papers. It's right. a big kind of telling it's little birds. birds. No, yeah. it's a hard world outside of Sesame Street, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope he better be yellow. He better be yellow. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's super cool, and the the details are great. Like he's got the he's got the boots with the uh, the little back uh, end for the talon at the uh, at the end. Yeah, no, um, it's fantastic. And the, uh, yeah, and the the backwards, uh, you know, the back folding legs and stuff. And um, yeah, no, it's it's really cool that um, that this guy has made a name for himself. He's a big news tycoon and he got out of that dead end job singing zippity doodah on splash mountain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's and, a big tycoon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I love Morgan's is great, great character. Um, so does this mean that there's like a race of bird people like the minks, but they're birds? 
Right. That's the question. Don't huh? ask so many questions. This isn't a podcast dissecting what if, One Piece. No, what if One Piece <laughs> takes place in the same world as The Legend of Zelda and these are the Rito? I would and we lose also, my shit. We have Ritos. We have Zoras. We just need to get some. Well, Gorons. You felt kind of looking like a Goron right now. Look at his face. He looks. Like we a have Goron. giants for Garuda, but there's males. Mm. Um, and uh, the next guy is uh, Giberson, um, who is the warehouse kingpin, um, and also his epithet is the hider, um, presumably because he's hiding stuff in his warehouses. And uh, or he, he has is, some sort uh, of devil fruit where he could hide stuff. Mm, could be, although that does kind of overlap with yeah. Capone's. Uh, Capone style. I wasn't even thinking like, Capone. I was thinking the white beard pirate who took out like hammers and stuff from out of oh, the hammer space. Yeah. Mm. That maybe is not that guy's Giberson, name. <laughs> maybe Giberson and Morgans are working together and Giberson is hiding weapons of mass destruction and Morgans is like trying to report on it and everyone's saying that it's fake news. That'd be mm. amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the only thing go. he's hiding is wine in his stomach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. His eyes wine. bugging out. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> If Morgans were in here, this next guy would be my favorite, I think. Mm-hmm. No? Yeah. The uh, Well, okay, so uh, everybody's excited about the wedding, um, but Giberson says, oh, uh, yeah, but it's, I mean, it's not, it's not new. It's, it's not new news. It's old news. It's old. Uh, the whole underworld knows about it. And then this guy, Umit, the shipping king, whose nickname is Deep Sea Currents, and um, he takes a lot of, he, too clearly takes a lot of pride in his business because he's got a big old anchor on his uh, his bicorn hat there, and uh, uh, he he's the shipper and say shipper dip dip news worth shipping hardly. So, <laughs> what can a... I just say right now? And I'm so upset that Brian couldn't make it on today. These are all Rick and Morty characters, all of them. <laughs> oh, totally, totally. Yeah. Especially like the last three that we just went through, but mm. totally. Um, this is why Vegapunk has to be Rick. It's just and for worlds. those who weren't listening to the anime recap last week, the voice of Japanese Rick is in the anime currently. He's the vice admiral. <laughs> uh, anyway, amazing. what a page. Um, we'll yeah. probably talk about this a little bit later. We should probably keep going on with the chapter, though. Um, Kelly. So all of these esteemed guests are now heading uh, to the entrance and we see Pero Sparrow, esteemed tyrants of the underworld, your path through the castle might cause delay. So if you would prefer, I could prepare her in a shortcut like so. And now we have this amazing candy escalator that's appearing. And all the crowd is super excited. And they're like, wow, cool. And we've got very nice stuff. Why Pero Sparrow, your candy crafting is a work of art. Much obliged. Mama hates tardiness. Now let's move lickety split. You are our oh final God. guests. I know. Steven. <laughs> Steven, that was phenomenal. Absolutely. Yeah. That one. Um, not only has Steven been on point in this chapter, but I think Oda is experimenting a lot in this chapter. And the next sure. page will continue that experiment, Jill. All right. And it truly is an escalator because they stand on and the stairs move on their own. Um, apparently they're not sticky. <laughs> is that the then, fat guy who says that no work required yes <laughs> oh no, no, no that's the no, that's Morgan. That's, yeah, yeah, that's that's du- Dufeld's yeah. the one who is like ooh they move on their I mean remember escalators probably don't exist very much in one piece because yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean Morgan could theoretically just fly up on his own but nah he's yeah. gonna take the escalator um, he, he might be a flightless uh, bird Jill like that's come on we don't know is Big Bird can Big Bird fly I don't think he can I don't think Big Bird flies. I don't think Big Bird flies. That's badass. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't make so much fun of Big Bird. He might get killed off soon by the government. Oh, no. uh, anyway, go oh. ahead. In both One Piece and the real world, it's who knows. <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> Did that get a little too real, Jill? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking of Big Bird. He's just getting shot on the sesame street. <laughs> and, and the person who shoots him just says, budget cuts. <laughs> anyway, <Okay>. chill. <laughs> um, and then Pedro Spedo gives all the kids some candy to keep them um, 
to keep him calm what, during this big whirling escalator, saying, get along now, kids. After three minutes, you may lick the candy coaster. Did which you just is... say pedo sparrow, by the way? Because that oh, really God. makes a lot of uh, sense for this. Yeah. <laughs> yep, uh, this is a very creepy panel, I'm not going to lie. Especially the one where he just, like, yeah. it's like suddenly he realizes there are children near him. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> that's not a good vibe. Yeah. <laughs> candy. I saw some people mentioning on Twitter that apparently this dude's based on some child snatcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and I've never seen that movie, so I need to don't go watch Chitty Chitty Don't talk about Way Wonka that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, we get a really Wonka moment at the end of this chapter. And I <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, to be fair, most of this arc has been a Willy Wonka moment. Yeah. yeah. But there's, I feel like there's a direct reference. I got candy escalator, glass elevator. We're close. The yep. world of pure imagination. All right, and then we move to outside the tea party. And we hear someone go, open the gate. I don't need a body check. Um, and then one of uh, Capone's gang is, I'm afraid you do, sir. Um, is Big Mom already in here? See, I had an invitation from the last party. But sadly, I was unable to attend. It was my mother's funeral. I wrote my reasons a letter. But what do you think Big Mom sent me? And it is Organ Dealer Jigra. A character who uh, we most certainly will be seeing again. <laughs> yeah he's big he's uh mr 11's best friend um <laughs> Jigra and mr 11 um and then he just gets shot or something something hits him right in the forehead his hair goes or his hat goes flying off western style um and the everyone is shocked at this even capone um and that door is amazing that is my favorite thing about this. No, whole she's page. the uh, she's the, um, uh, the 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 dresser from Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing. I I believe she probably sounds the same, and that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> she's all prettied up. I I like to think Big Mom put makeup on her for the tea party. Like normally she looks fine, but she was like dressed up for today. The roses and the bow. Yeah. Um, and then you see um with a little plink, um it is a jelly bean. Um, and this dude looks dead. <laughs> yeah. And Ed, can you do Capone? Well, fine. That was a gust. And then up somewhere high, he was going to say, what do you think Big Mom sent me? My hospitalized father's head. And I've come here today for revenge. Open the gate. Blam, blam. Then he opens fire. He shot two of your men. Um, and it seems that the voice was General Katakuri. Yeah, and Ed, yes. can you reveal this Trigon character to us? <laughs> <laughs> no, ba- based, based on based on the, the scarves, it's totally Joseph Joestar. He's it's got the rhyme. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Before that happened, I threw a jelly bean at him. Is that a mistake, Bedge the Rook? Tell Mama that it was my call. And now you'll say, all right, we'll do. <laughs> all right, we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Here's the biggest source of trouble at the party. This color of observation hockey is so refined, you can actually see the near future. No wonder he's worth a billion. And yes, it is the Big Mom Pirates. <clears throat> Wait. Big Mom Pirates. Sweet three general. Second son of Charlotte. Charlotte Katakuri. And what does this uh, mean again, Stephen? Uh, Katakuri is, um, is essentially potato starch. Um which uh you know is used in lots of confections and stuff um so yeah i i could have called him i you know it was a kind of a toss up um like i was pretty sure when he was first mentioned that that was you know the um the the angle you know the theming of the the name but i wasn't sure if i should keep calling him katakuri or to translate it as starch since you know all of the other names are you know they're they're already kind of Western in um, in styling, so mm-hmm. people would recognize them at a glance. Um, but I was like, eh, I we, you know we kind of we 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 fell back on on just um, sticking with Katakuri. Yeah, I mean Katakuri uh, sounds cool for sure, and it makes sense considering, like you mentioned with the confections, he's using jelly beans, so it's like right you know, goes right in hand with it. But Charlotte just to Starch. Note, <laughs> yeah, he does look like a combination of Joseph Joestar and Legato Blue Summers. Yes, that's exactly the two people that came to my brain. I, I yeah. wanted to ask you though, Stephen, because the the name that was used in the scanlations was Dog Tooth. This week, a lot of people were calling him Dog Tooth, and I was wondering like what the significance of that is. Like, 
Um, I think that is probably see. So katakuri, um, there is a specific like flower or a plant called uh, katakuri that was used. It's it's sort of like um, you know uh, with uh, was it mozzarella where it's supposedly made from like water buffalo uh, milk that that they, they used to make the cheese, um, but. Like it, in actuality, like it al- almost none of it is nowadays because that's obviously a really difficult way to to get. Um, it, but like traditionally speaking, that was where it came from. Katakuri is like the plant that they supposedly originally got this starch stuff from. But when they say katakuri ko, which is basically like katakuri powder, it's literally just like potato starch powder um, in in all cases. Um, so I think they may have been trying to to use that, but that yeah that's that's kind of a weird angle to to take it especially since i don't know yeah like if you were gonna if you wanted to translate the name to a meaning that would you know be recognizable to people that that fits the thematic part of the arc it would be you know charlotte starch or starchy or something like that but hey hey starchy it's just a little (laughs) too cartoonish i think for this guy who looks super cool he Um, looks like furiosa to me like yeah, I yeah. Noticed, totally. Yeah, the belt yeah, buckle. Yeah, like all the spikes, just like the whole theme, the scarves and everything. I full on thought it was just Furiosa. So, so what? What is? Are we putting like ninety percent odds that when the uh, the stuff gets taken away from his mouth, he has something really dumb looking under there that he's hiding? <laughs> Definitely, hundred <laughs> like, percent. So this is one piece. Th- this guy is. Other than Mr. Anime uh, in Tresrosa, whose name no one really wants to remember, even though I do and I don't want to, um, Gladius, the, he he looks too cool. There's got to be something. Something's there. Something. Watch, he has like jelly bean teeth or something. <laughs> yeah, no teeth. Go. He ate too much candy. Oh man. Just maybe he, maybe he has nothing to do with jelly beans, and he just likes flicking jelly beans at people's heads. Like who knows? Even like. <laughs> We've seen so little of him. Uh, we're def- I, I definitely want to. A- yeah, go ahead, Jill. I thought it was a thumbs up at first. I didn't realize he was flicking jelly beans. <laughs> I was like, "What a weird dumb pose!" He's just giving a thumbs up. That would have been way funnier, but whatever. We'll take what we could get. Um, well, definitely, I want to talk a little bit more about his power at the end. Um, so let's move on, Ed. Okay. Uh, the door begins to open. Great. Uh, the door opens. Please come in. Oh, it uh, it smells so nice. It always looks tasty around here. It's guests come and then we hear off uh, off the side there, Kya! and then some laughing. <laughs> and oh, it's it's Charlotte Smoothie. Welcome, guests. May I fix you a drink? <laughs> and uh, um, B- Big Bird asks, <laughs> "What's on the menu today?" She has got this picture. Um, she's got. <laughs> Mount Maori lava, and there's a big rock. There is Babe who stabbed a hundred men <laughs> hanging in nice dress there, and weird screaming giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <God. laughs> Ed's, Ed's uh, reading is really good. Oh, please. I'll try the giraffe. <laughs> Coming right up. <laughs> I wish you would have called it Jeffrey Juice. That would have been something. Oh, like no. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, yes. Juice. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Juice. Coming right up, man. God. I lost my shit at this page. Like, it's not more so than anything else in this chapter. Like, there is a giraffe, and we're juicing it. Oh, my God. Ugh. Oh, the, the the warehouse king is beside himself with laughter at this point. <laughs> Him and the rest of us. <laughs> they're, they're, they're sipping it like, oh, that's awesome. Tasty and smooth, says Stussy. Mm. <laughs> so that, uh, it's that smooth giraffe mouthfeel. <laughs> oh, I love giraffes. She's a giraffe I don't, I don't oh, have cool. anything to go with that. <laughs> this giraffe is smooth. Anyway nearly time oh wait there's big mom the door opens and she appears at the top of the stairs we go to the next page and Roger. finally we see big mom the tea party's about to get everyone's gathered together and she says thank you all for making the trip out look to your right and look to your left everything you see is edible eat and drink all you like and just have a good time. You're all in for a real show today. Ma, 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 ma. And then it says, 
to be continued. Mm. Woo! Miss Chapman, we're not going on break. No, we're not going on break. Don't even scare me like that. Uh, <laughs> there's a <laughs> lot. Three weeks. It's been like three weeks. I was thinking we might do one, but probably next. I don't know. Oh, yeah, actually, I'm yeah. So glad next or the week break. after. Yeah. Oh, um, this page has a lot going on in it as well. Um, I really like the uh, the pumps. door at the. The door at the top, which I'm going to refer to as Suave Usopp, that he's uh, he's doing. <laughs> That's the Suave Usopp. When I when I go to the club, I do the Suave Usopp. I was looking on the bottom of this page. Is that pig who's toasting to Big Mom? Is that pig the same pig who was like the Porks carriage or whatever you call no. it? The porks no, wagon. the Porks wagon. Porks wagon. Sorry, I, I call it Porks. So. Well, pig's a mammal, so it's probably a mink. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Mm. And then I noticed, too, the dude in the bottom middle kind of has, like, the same legs as Smoothie and Katakuri. Yeah. So I'm wondering, like, who that is. Is that, that's not, that it's isn't an elf. Smoothie? It has, it has the elf ears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Very, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's Smoothie's father. And Panda Man is in the uh, far right as well, underneath Dufeld. Is he? I don't mm-hmm. think Smoothie's father would still be around, considering he'd be one of Big Mom's earlier husbands. That's true. Yeah, we haven't seen any other husband, so it's just kind of curious. Maybe they were being kept in the book prison, and then when the book yeah, prison oh, yeah. all finally yeah. falls, they all come up. That makes sense. Yeah. Man, this is great. So, no, yeah, if there's yeah. anything else on the last page, I guess you guys could go through it, but let's go around. I, yes. oh, but the, the Willy Wonka is directly here. Everything you see oh, is yeah. edible. It's eatable. You can eat everything. Just directly <laughs> from snozberries tastes like snozberries. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I really like the uh, it it you know you you can kind of gloss over it as just like a a sort of typical chapter ender, but I really like the last line where she says you're all in for a real show today because specifically because Oda has um, kind of built up this arc, especially in the last like dozen chapters or so. He's he's done this kind of revolving carousel of like conspiracy and betrayal where like you find out, oh, this person knows more than they're letting on. This person knows more than they're letting on. And, you know, it's kind of he's wound up this this situation where, you know, everyone is plotting against each other and you don't know who knows what or who knows how much about who else's plans and so in that situation like you can take this as like a dramatic irony where big mom is like oh you're all in for a real show today because she's thinking to herself like oh we're gonna kill all this germa fools and she has no idea that capone has this big plan to kill her or it's like you know you start thinking like oh or does she know too like is she aware of this plan that's going on because there's a triple cross you know is there some even you know deeper part of this that we haven't seen yet because you know they just don't stop coming and it's it's really like just kind of menacing in a way that works on multiple levels that I love. Well, Steven, speaking of the other plan that Capone has, I don't see a picture frame anywhere. I was just going to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Um, more suspicions when it comes to that. I want to go. I want to hear what you guys thought of this chapter, though. And we'll go one by one here. Jill, I want to hear from you first. Um, I thought it was fantastic. I love the underworld bosses. They're so much fun. Um, I would like to know uh, the real scoop about Morgan's uh, relationship to Captain Morgan. Are they related? <laughs> Big news. <laughs> um, I just, I think it's like you said, it's so much fun. Um, like thinking about like how deep do the conspiracies go? How much do we each know about the real plans? Um, what's really going to end up happening at the tea party? Because even though we all know bits and parts of each plan, how it's all going to end up happening together. Because it's never going to go smoothly because Luffy is there and, uh, yeah. But um, but smoothie is really there, fun. so it should go smoothly. <laughs> I guess that's true, but Alvita's not, so it's going to not be that smooth. Um, good point, good point, good point. <laughs> and that whole, uh, the whole first part with the uh, Jimbe, oh man, my heart. Like, God, Fish Uncle, please join the crew as soon as possible. So what I need in my life. Um, I'm going to throw an It's a Boy party. Everyone's invited. <laughs> it's be really exciting. I love this chapter. Uh, Roger, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, this chapter is magnificent. I gave it a five out of five. That rarely happens. I don't normally give stuff five out of five unless I really, really like it. 
But uh, there's just so much here. I feel like this is one of those chapters that we're going to come back to a decade from now and be like, oh, my God, look at everything he set up with these characters, with Katakuri even, like with, with him being able to see into the future a little bit with his observation hockey. That opens up a whole new world of like possibilities with advanced types of hockey. Because, you know, we found out about Devil Fruit Awakening all the way back during Dress Rosa, and that was sort of like the next level power up for Devil Fruit users. And it kind of feels like, this is a tease of what's to come for people who are like really, really powerful hockey users. So I want to know more about that. I am terrified for Jim Bay, like genuinely terrified. I could easily see this uh, happening where everything goes wrong at the tea party. And then Jim Bay basically has to sacrifice himself Bon Clay style to let everybody escape. I just, I'm just like, I'm so nervous for him. And uh, all of these new characters, Morgans, Morgans is such a boss, this big bird looking, <laughs> I love him so much. And the one thing that really stuck out to me with Morgans was the relationship that he has with Germa, because he mentioned like the paper has the deep ties with him, and we already know the comic, the Germa comic strip was in the paper. But I'm wondering, because a lot of us pointed this out when we first saw the Germa, um, like the, the logos and the statues where everything kind of looks like birds and falcons. And we all kind of assumed that that was like references to sort of Nazi-esque imagery. And now I'm thinking that could actually have some other deeper meaning and that maybe somehow the newspaper was actually funding a lot of the research of Derma Double Six. I think you mean shallow. You mean there. shallower meaning because they would actually be birds. <laughs> true. Yeah, I guess that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's, true. that's very true. <laughs> But uh, I just, I love all of these characters. Peklo, or however you say his name, Pieklo. I, I just see him as this character at the end of this tea party who's mopping up the blood from the floor and, like, taking <laughs> all the dead bodies. It's just, oh, this chapter, this is why I read One Piece for chapters like this. I absolutely loved it. Uh, Steven. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, I think the, I feel like the Jim Bay scene, just kind of going through these in order, I feel like the gym base scene, it felt to me very uh, kind of, I don't know, functional. Like it was very much like, a, OK, let's wrap up Jim Bay's angle and, and the rest of the the Fishman pirates so that they're kind of done for the moment. We don't have to address them in the middle of the, you know, get them out of the way so that the, um, you know, the real action can begin. Um, so it felt like he was kind of, um, you know, uh, closing that closing out the tab, if you will, um, for those guys. Um and uh, and for Peckham's as well, uh, I love the I love the pacing of of stuff that you know we're just kind of going straight you know we're rolling straight into the the tea party. There doesn't seem to be a lot of of preamble um, leading up to it, uh, which is 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 fun because I you know we were all really interested to see what's going to happen at this at this wedding, and he's um, he's not wasting his time. Um, I, I'm still not sure what to think, um, you know, aside from just the, you know, the crazy designs of these uh, of these underworld figures. I'm not I'm still kind of, uh, I guess, a little skeptical that they're that they're necessarily like individually going to have meaningful roles. I feel like there are there are a lot of flavor for this arc, um, but I, I feel like they are, you know, it, like I said, it, it definitely feels has a Corita Coliseum type feel where you just get, you know, these these very vivid um, characters who, who don't necessarily need to be fleshed out super deeply. Um, but, uh, you know, it depends on how complex he's going to make the, uh, the whole, the wedding scene, um, and how that plays out. Uh, let's see. The Katakuri thing was, was really cool. Um, like super, super cool character design, which is why I'm, I'm so certain that there has to be some, uh, there has to be some, some, some silly counterbalance to that. Um, uh, has a very, very much like a kind of law on steroids, uh, vibe to the, uh, to the design and the, uh, the powers are super cool as well. And uh, I feel I'm almost positive that in, in functional terms, like, okay, the, the observation hockey that is super powerful to let him like essentially predict stuff is, is going to be a mechanism by which that, you know, th that they won't necessarily get to. Uh, you know, putting pulling up the gun and and shooting Sanji or or something like that. You know that, mm. or, or that the um they'll they'll try to um to to do the uh, you know the Capone's plan will will attempt to to start and maybe he'll he'll foresee it or maybe you know Luffy's entrance is going to be so preposterous that even Katakuri can't see it coming or you know something like that. 
Um, like it, it's an interesting mix and it definitely, I feel like that's the only reason that that power is introduced because it has to play into this, this big dramatic moment. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's just, it's super, super exciting. I'm loving the way that he is building this up. Great chapter. Kelly. Such a fun chapter. And, you know, when you're talking about double crossing and triple crossing and, and all these people conspiring against each other, it also kind of just makes me wonder if maybe Germa's got a little something on the side there, too. And the comment from Morgan's with the deep ties to Germa, I'm wondering if any of those underworld bosses might be on Germa's side. So mm. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe there's a quadruple cross in there somewhere. Um one of the things that I thought was really interesting um, was you've got another Charlotte kid who's totally okay with the idea of her mom getting assassinated <laughs> with um, Praline. Well, she mentioned it? it earlier. Since it just seems like, you know, a lot of these kids are just leaving. They don't seem to be that worried about their mom. So yeah, She's I'm got a lot of kids. So. She yeah, has a lot yeah, of kids, yeah. and I'm just wondering how horrible she was to, her, to all of her kids. <laughs> Um, when you got like a narcissistic mother like that, you always play favorites. If only oh, always favorites. If only one of her kids was a therapist. <laughs> um, <laughs> since no one mentioned it, I'm totally digging the Vin Smoke family's outfits um, that they're wearing for the wedding. And since nobody mentioned what I thought was the highlight, which is that little glimpse of Sanji's uh, white tuxedo, <laughs> which made me nervous because white shows blood. So now I'm completely panicked. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be his blood. <laughs> True. That's fine. As long as it's not his. <laughs> it's going to be giraffe blood. It's definitely going to be giraffe blood, guys. Giraffe juice all over the giraffe place. Juice. Jeffrey, right. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, right. juice. Jeffrey, Jeffrey juice. juice. Jeffrey juice. Jeffrey juice. Um, Ed, what did you think? <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I haven't had this much fun reading a chapter in a long time. Like, I, I lost my shit multiple places in this chapter like the, the screaming giraffe the, the the introduction of all these uh all, all these people like the pork uh what was it called the pork wagon pork wagon <laughs> my god uh oda's like he's on a character design role this this arc like he's really giving it his all i've uh, been really digging it i'm kind of curious what peckham's is doing uh, after this point like he's got to like you know, he's going to speak now. He's not going to hold his peace. He's got to get free and, like, interrupt the wedding somehow. I don't know. But uh, he, he's sort of out yeah. there as a, un, you know, and they they left him. So he's like an unresolved, he's an untied string at this point. Um, and I, I'm really interested in, in Jimbei. Like, he's totally willing to give up his life at this point. Like, he's basically consigned himself to joining the Straw Hats. And part of being one of the Straw Hat Pirates is to be able to, like, give up your life. But I think he's too willing to give up his life. I don't know if Flippy's going to like that. Like, he's going to let him do that. Uh, I mean, you know, no way. Never... His... Yeah, exactly. It's, historically, it's just not going to happen. No. Um, yeah. It's, my God, these characters, like, all of these characters. And as you said, I mean, although some of them, the ones from the Cory de Coliseum, ended up being a lot more important than we thought they would be initially joining up with, with Luffy like that. But, um, man. I, there is something to be said for like Stussy's understated design. At this point, she's she sort of stands out by being underdesigned. Like she doesn't have all sorts of garish accoutrements. And mm. um, I think it, she it, 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 she, she's got she's very like um oh, uh, God. What was like a silent? It's like a very silent film star. Very nineteen twenties. I like totally. it. She reminds me of like Daisy from The Great Gatsby. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Very that's a really so. that's a good comparison. Yeah. Uh, and she's queen of pleasure, so I'm kind of excited to see um, how courtesan. that ends up being. Because, I mean, yeah, obviously there's, like, the whole, uh, like, courtesan, whorehouse, like, part of that. But, I mean, you don't get, like, invited to Big Mom's tea party just by being, like, some big madame. There's got to be so, some, like, terrifying <laughs> angle. There was a yeah. great theory I saw on Twitter where someone mentioned this to me. All the way back at the beginning of this arc... When we found out that Caesar Clown wasted all his money on prostitutes, <laughs> like if at some point, uh, oh yeah, she that's sees it. Caesar and she's like, "You owe me money. What are you doing here?" <laughs> and he's like, "What are you talking about? I'm Gastino. I, I I don't know what you're talking about." She's like, "No, no, 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 no. I sent my women to your ship, and you didn't pay me. You owe me money." I think that'd be really funny to bring I'd, that back. I'd say it would be a cool idea to have her like 
as a siren kind of, but I mean, mm -hmm. Boa Hancock kind of fits that bill a little bit, but I, I think there's still mm -hmm. some potential there. Uh, um, you know, I don't know if we actually mentioned this, but Katakuri has a 1 billion 57 million berry bounty. Yeah, we is did kind of skip over that. Yes, Probably? it is. Yeah. The highest we've seen. Like, mm -hmm. he's ridiculous. Guess who he beats? Powerful. Roger, who did that beat? <laughs> Yep, boys, he beats Jack the Drought. I know. We're uh, not Jelly Bean Boys, though. We're not turning into the Jelly Starch Bean Boys. boys. No, <laughs> starch boys. <laughs> so, Roger, you're gonna have two crews. You're gonna have your uh, your YouTube crew, the Jelly Bean Boys, versus the Starch Crew, who's gonna be uh, your podcast <laughs> listeners. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just just to quickly go through my thoughts on this chapter, I gotta say this was definitely one of the, if not the highlight chapter so far in this arc, um, it is off the wall. And we mentioned the Corita Coliseum stuff a few times. Uh, the character designs weren't bad in that, but these character designs are all amazing. I love that one page that Stephen went through with all the with the uh, underworld characters. Like every single one of them, huge fan. Even uh, even Stussy, who we've talked about, her kind of understated kind of. You know, she looks normal compared to the rest of them, but at the same time, she doesn't look like a lot of the women that Oda draws usually. Um, I, I, I don't mix her up with Nami immediately. Even Pudding, I mix up with Nami sometimes. <laughs> um, but God, this was this was a really cool chapter. The Jinbei stuff was cool to wrap up. There was a that was kind of bugging me in the back of my head, so I'm glad we got through that. Um, the Germa stuff, I mean. I feel like the more we see Jerma, the more idiotic they seem. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Because uh, every time I'm like, oh, no, maybe they know a little more than they, they're they acting like. And it's like, no, maybe they know less. They kind of feel like the It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia crew. A oh, my bit. God. <laughs> Actually, they're almost, it's, I think it's the same, um, like... It's one girl, right, and four guys in that. And, and Danny they, DeVito and they is the judge. Calico, they have the calico carriage, so they probably are the ones who produce kitten mittens. Kitten mittens! They're, they're Jerma double six kitten mittens. Um, Jerma goes to the tea party. So, anyway. Uh, th th yeah, the new characters are all great. We talked a lot about them. Um, I think uh, Morgan's connection, as we've discussed a few times, with Jerma will pay play a key role. I also think his the connection with the newspaper presents some really interesting stuff in the distant future of, the, of this arc, you know, toward the end, to report on everything that's happening. Having the head of the newspaper newspaper there i think i think that's i think oda put the, put him there for a reason beyond the fact that that design is amazing and everything about him is amazing um i'm sorry there's no one on this podcast for anyone who does not like morgan's uh, i'm sorry we all disagree with you here <laughs> they have objectively bad taste if they don't like morgan's i'm, I'm speaking for everybody on the podcast I mean, you yeah. have terrible taste and you should be ashamed of yourself <laughs> but we still love you and thank you for listening uh with kata curry um he definitely is a little Mr. Anime at the moment, but I, I have faith in Oda that there's going to be something really quirky about him. The color of uh, observation stuff, I think is just, as as Roger put it, a really cool insight as to how hockey will play a role in the series in the future. Um, not just with, I, I think, uh, I, I don't think we've seen any like hockey power-ups besides uh, Awaken. Uh, Virgo. But I don't think that's, Oh well, Enteru. Is that a but is that, that a power up? Yeah, I think that was more through his devil fruit. Um, mm. I don't think Virgo necessarily. I don't know is if I don't know if that's a super strong armament hockey necessarily. I think it's just he knew he was very skillful at it, uh, much like Crocodile was skillful as devil fruit, but he didn't know how to awaken it, uh, as far as we know. Um, I don't I know. I feel like the quote unquote like awakened version of maybe armament hockey would be maybe or maybe have something to do with like big mom being this steel blimp that's impenetrable and yeah. maybe like the advanced form is basically you don't have to activate it it's just always active yeah and i think the one that's most interest interesting is the color of the supreme king and right. thinking how does that go to the next level and and what would that look like so i i think there there's a very interesting concept Oda introduced here is basically uh, where I was going with that. Smoothie is just getting more and more awesome. I'm upset Steve's not on because I know I think that's Steve's uh, favorite, uh, his boo. Um, and 
yeah, I'm just super excited to get the show underway. Uh, we said last week we'd be a little disappointed if there was a chapter in between. I take that back. This was a really good chapter. Um, and the party seems to, I believe, will be beginning next week. So uh, let's hold on to uh, whatever we have to hold on to. And why don't, with that, why don't we get into the anime recap? Are you guys ready? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is the anime recap for episode 781, The Implacable Three, A Big Chase After the Straw Hats. I'm your host, Sam, and today with me we have Ed. Yes. Yes, once again. Another yeah, another um, episode of filler. <laughs> there have been many worse fillers. There, yes, I agree. And as we found out, apparently, uh, I, I, it only occurred to me today, but... A couple of these characters are named after, like, famous rock musicians. Right. There's Zappa, who's obviously Frank Zappa, and Bonham, John Bonham from Led Zeppelin. So if anyone else can think of what ground could be, that would be <laughs> that would be helpful. The screenplay this week is by Tomohiro Nakayama. The episode director and storyboard artist is Yoshihiro Ueda. And animation director is Midori Matsuda. The title card begins at 5 minutes and 19 seconds. So the episode opens with Luffy continuing to eat despite a huge crowd of marines uh, circled around him and Carrot and staring them down. He's, he needs to fin- he needs to make sure he finishes up his meal before he he makes a run for it. Uh, Carrot's asking him uh, what they should do. Uh, she's never really been in a situation like this before, and obviously Luffy has to follow up with, "Well, I guess we have no choice." And Carrot's like, "Yes, we run, right?" And Luffy's like, "No, we." Eat more food, and then oh, they so Luffy, yeah. And then they make a they make a beeline for the curry pot and just start eating right out of it uh, from across the across the cafeteria. Yeah. The the Marines are just flabberga- flabbergasted; they don't really know what to do uh, until it is Grout who is jumping in, starting a fight with Luffy. He's using his knives versus Luffy's uh, ladle, which is which he's basically using like a sword. He's he's pretty good with it. And I think, I think sort of based on the attitude that Ground has this episode, I think my my impression of him is being inspired by at least partially Luffy's design and his face. I think yeah, we, I was seeing, kind of, I was seeing what you were talking about last week, where you said he looks like he could be related to the the monkey. Yeah, family. and he's got the he's, and he's got the sort of attitude. These are the good the, the, like I feel like these are the good Marines, and we kind of mm-hmm. get that again at the end of the episode. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, uh, Marines. And this is actually a pretty like stylish and like well choreographed fight between Luffy and Grouch. Luffy, uh, he's got his arm like twisted around this giant pot, and he's like using the ladle. Uh, so he's, he's basically got a, a, a sword and shield uh, that he's using. Uh, surprisingly proficient for a guy who normally just likes to punch stuff. Uh, and uh, we cut to a scene where Nami and Chopper are trying to sneak into basically this warehouse that's on the island. Uh, and Nami mentions that she finally gets to use her her cat burglar skills yeah like why was chopper the one trying to open it first in the first place like come uh-huh. on Naomi's the one with the skills here right uh, and then back in the cafeteria we see bonham uh beefing himself up like getting his muscles all huge and he starts using a familiar Very, technique. Uh, kumadori yeah yeah familiar technique uh the finger pistol turns out he's a he's proficient at the six powers like cp9 uh, and and i think we see him use just about all of them so like he's Pretty close he didn't to like use Luchi. the paper art. He didn't. No, that's what because that that's what he uses later. He, uses, he does that oh, he thing does? that Luchi does oh. to like shrink down. Um, and that was like the the life return. I thought it was like Kumadori's well, that, technique. That's, I could be wrong. That's though. a part of the paper art. I think that's mm. like a <laughs> it's like a way to use it. Okay. Uh, but Luffy is able to get away by knocking him out with a jet pistol, and he and Carrot are off. Uh, I like the power level that they sort of show this episode that Luffy, he doesn't go beyond gear two in this fight. And he basically just sort of blows them away. Uh, So Zappa is waiting for them in the hallway and uh, he has a bouquet of carrots for a one carrot. (laughs) And uh, so at at this point, I noticed that like carrot was drawn in pervier way today in this in this episode she was drawn uh, her features were larger <laughs> i like, there, i think there's a couple shots where that was the case but overall I, I didn't 
it didn't stand out to me too much. Uh, the other art than, was a little, the art was a little off in this. Yeah, episode, other, other than the art being off a little bit in every episode, you know, it didn't. There were a few as, wonky eyes, which were just whoa. True. Uh, yeah. So Zappa's guy bouquet of carrots. Uh, he's offering them two carrot, and she happily accepts them, and she's like, "Wow, that's such a nice thing." And she gartu she gartus him, and he he faints and. Mm. Uh, and uh, but then he eventually has to get back up and he starts attacking Luffy because he wants to he wants both Nami and Carrot for himself as wives, and uh, Luffy is blocking his greedy. Yeah, Luffy's blocking him uh, with his armament hockey, and uh, Carrot has to step in and zap him, and she's she feels bad that she has to knock him out with her electro because uh, she, he just gave her a bunch of carrots. Uh, but you know what? She's got she's got to play for the team, so. Yeah, she's she was like inches away from stabbing him right in the dick, <laughs> like with you, you like shock your nuts. It, that's right. what's, it was almost there, almost. Uh, and then this is when Brooks' uh, ghost appears. He pops up in the wall. He scares Carrot, uh, but then he's telling them, "Oh, I know, I know where we can get the food. Uh, the others have found it, and uh, he can't resist also sneaking in a can I see your panties to Carrot." She no sells it completely. <laughs> Didn't even acknowledge. <laughs> and uh, Zappa is chasing after them, asking uh, Carrot to electrocute him some more. So we know he's into. And we're like halfway through the episode already at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Carrot's. We we even see Carrot like actually like hopping around like a rabbit on all fours as she's zapping the different Marines. <laughs> Notice that. Uh, Brooke. Just go straight through the wall, asking Luffy and Carrot to follow through to follow him, and they just smash right into it. Uh, but then, you know, the, a wall isn't too difficult for Luffy to circumvent. He just punches right through it, and uh, soon the whole crew is reuni- reunited at the warehouse. They're munching down at the food. Nami is uh, getting mad at them for getting a little little eager uh, about eating ahead of ahead of uh, getting all the food onto the onto the thousand sunny uh and even choppers eating too he's just like yeah guys don't eat too much was he eating a can of cotton candy uh i don't remember i wasn't paying attention uh, it, was, it was like it was like canned food but it was like blue and pink and i was uh carrots eating her carrots and she's got like the stems like sticking out of her mouth <laughs> uh so grouch and his crew they show up uh and it turns into a big showdown where we see chopper versus Va- bonham uh where this is where we see him use that like shrinking life return thing uh and it's like a it's like a fight of like transformations chopper's using his transformations bonham's using his transformations uh but eventually chopper pulls through and there's a fight between nami and carrot together versus zappa uh both of them are zapping him so <laughs> there's there's a little exchange of uh nami telling zappa that he is too fickle uh, i don't think you understand what girls want and they they take him out uh, zapping him as uh, as he requested, uh, and then he he gets back up and he's got like these flaming swords, but we just punches the swords away, or punches yep. the the flames away. Very much not on his level. They're rookies. Yep. But this all escalates to a final uh, Luffy versus Grout fight. Uh, there, this is another like surprisingly cool and well animated fight uh, between the two of them. Uh, they are. Uh, Grounts noticing that Luffy's punches are are heavier; they're stronger than they were before. And Luffy mentions that that is because he is not hungry this time. So uh, Luffy was already doing a pretty good job of of holding his ground, but now that he's uh, full of energy and full of food, uh, Grount is got nothing on him. Uh, and there's a little talk about the four emperors, where the kind of they're kind of challenging each other to to who is the one. Uh, who's going to take down the four emperors? And Luffy's like, nope, that's going to be me. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Grout's getting pretty emotional in this fight. Uh, these, there's kind of a, a filmsy-ish, like, s- steaming roar as Grout is uh, is getting more and more invested in the fight. Uh, but the Straw Hats, they, they get away again, uh, and they are stopped by Vice Admiral Prody, who's making, like, this big speech of... You know, despite the misery you caused, you call it an adventure. Pirates are nothing but a bad thing in this world. And he's actually making a pretty good point. Like, it's like, this is how the Marines feel. Uh, this is yeah. the reason why we still like the Marines, even when they are antagonists. It's but the they, same speech that Magellan gave in uh, Impel Down. But he follows it up with, uh, you got to stop it. Otherwise, I'll be demoted. <laughs> and uh, all of his his uh, Marines are are kind of 
shocked that uh, it's all a self-serving speech. It's total, definitely. total filler move. Yep, uh, and that's roughly how the episode ends. Uh, I was actually the one of the more interesting things about this episode. I thought was the next episode preview, where we're seeing some things that weren't introduced in this arc yet. Uh, but mm. I don't know if it's if this is the time to talk about it. But yeah, uh, general, week. yeah, general thoughts on the episode. I like the level that the the uh, the filler characters are at. Like Luffy, like they it barely takes them a, you know a couple of minutes of a fight to sort of swat them away. I'm a little curious about where it leads like how they're going to power themselves up and try but this is only a three episode filler right this is over after i next think week, so yeah it? okay so i'm i'm kind of okay with that because like it's going to be over after next week and you know minor trouble easily dispatched very mm-hmm. you know keep keep the straw hats strong in the pro wrestling sense of it you know don't want to book them into a book them you know book them into a squash here on the filler uh don't want to make it too hard on them it keeps them strong and uh yeah, I, it's it, these are kind of fun characters. I wish they had a little bit more backstory to them than being sort of upstarts who well, that's what, were with with Aokiji. But yeah, yeah that, <laughs> that's what it looks like we're getting next week. Is there's sort of a, a little snippet of Grant talking to Aokiji, and and Grant mm-hmm. has some deal he's dealing with. Um, yeah, hopefully. I mean that that would that would make this actually a pretty good filler. I mean, me. even though the Straw Hats are way above. These guys, in terms of strength, like there's still mm-hmm. something really respectable about these marine rookie guys, because uh, like you can tell that they are strong and they are gonna like go somewhere in life mm-hmm. uh, as they as they keep at it. Um, yeah. And yeah, I like I I think that these are uh, four filler characters. These are pretty strong, like character wise, like they're they're pretty entertaining and they're they're pretty likable and they're not embarrassing to watch, uh, like filler characters often are um i mean i mean i imagine some people might have a problem with, with Zappa, but yeah, they would Zappa, have a problem yeah. with they would have a problem with sanji then too yeah kind of yeah but um yeah other than that i like it yeah same here i think that should do it you ready to head on to the next segment sure all right let's go okay And now you'll say, this is the Piece Together segment, where we take your questions, comments, theories, and answer them. This is the Piece Together segment, where we take your questions, comments, and theories, and answer them. Huh? Anyway. (laughs) 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 That was a little weird. Uh, Okay, I guess we'll start with emails. First one comes from Christopher. Hey, One Piece Podcast. Also, I'm here. Oh, yeah, Sam. Jeez. Oh, God. (laughs) You just snuck in there. You, like, slinked in. Uh, after the anime recap, you, you, he wouldn't leave. I don't know what, I don't know, but it's nice to have you, right? You know, Sam, it's, it's always good to have I you. I kicked Steven out. <laughs> it's like, get out of here, Steven. I'm Sam. Uh, okay. There's only room for one tall man on this podcast. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> Steven's not that tall. Um, okay. yeah, he's six foot something, I think, right? Is it? I don't know. Yeah. He's not as tall as you and Steve tall. No, you guys are six, <laughs> four, right? I'm anyway, we- like six, three. And now anyway. I'll say emails. Uh, hey, One Piece Podcast, when is the next time you think we'll see Shanks and his crew enter the story again? Any, any, um, either the, the, the Reverie, maybe? Mm. Mm. Reverie yeah. or Wano? I think yeah. after Wano. I think after uh, Wano. Yeah. I, well, I mean, uh, I feel like they could pop in. I think we're going to see them again, like in the within the next arc or two. Um, just just because it just it would feel weird if if we're away from them for that long. I, I mean, I think if we see Shanks, I don't think he's going to meet like Luffy or any of the main characters. I think it's going to be something where like maybe we see that Marco was with Shanks and Nekomamushi sees Shanks, but I don't necessarily think that like Luffy is going to meet Shanks anytime soon. Mm-hmm. I think it depends on the end of this arc because if like you know big stuff shakes up with Big Mom and the way the world is run, obviously we're going to get the reaction from the other Yonko. Hmm. Right. That's true. I think so. Um, I have some weird questions this week. Um, <laughs> I think I got to <laughs> skip them because we got a million. Um, <laughs> next oh. one. Sorry. Well, we maybe for our, our Patreon uh, podcast, we'll do some of the more ridiculous ones that I've I've found here. Uh, Jesse has a question. Uh, this week we saw one of Big Mom's guests uh, is a giant bird man, uh, aka evil Big Bird. I don't know if we know they're evil yet, but okay. At least journalistic slash uh, 
I don't, I don't know, aristocratic big bird. And it makes it made me wonder if this is a new avian tribe in the One Piece world, similar to the minks, poor mammals, fishmen, sea creatures. Uh, we also recently had confirmation that there was a previous unnamed three-eye tribe. My question is, uh, this week, is what other kinds of tribes or species or whatever we're calling them uh, would you like to see in One Piece? Insects or bugs? Reptile amphibians? What do you guys think? Bugs, well, for the record, for the record, bugs I think the dope, bird yeah. people are called the Rito. <laughs> there you go. That joke was already Damn. made, Sam. Oh, I love this. This is why oh, we're friends, it? buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a lot of these are could also just be devil fruits, so I'm like... I mean, they're already devil fruits for all the zoo animals, too, so it's just all very confusing. <laughs> Do you think he's just, like, some dude birds. who's a zoan who just has a bird fruit permanently <laughs> engaged? Maybe he's like Chopper, <laughs> and he... <laughs> maybe he's like Chopper, and he ate the, you know, a type of human fruit of some sort. The big bird fruit. Um, <laughs> it's a very specific Sesame Street-related fruit. <laughs> I was gonna say, the Sesame Sesame no me. Ah... <laughs> uh, these questions are just going to get more and more nonsensical, I have a feeling. Um, next one. Uh, last email we'll do is from Eric, who said after reading the newest chapter and witnessing the... Well, guess who this is a part about? Uh, and witnessing all of the esteemed guests visiting Big Mom's tea party, there was one that really <laughs> stood out to me. <laughs> and that was Morgan's. Uh, when I first saw him, I immediately wondered if he was the leader of the news coup that traveled the world, because before this chapter, I never really thought that there was much to the news coup, except as a means for people in the world to deliver mail and receive news. But if Morgan's really the leader, it adds a whole deeper layer to it than I never would have thought. My reason for this is because I mentioned him being the leader, so on and so forth. So do you guys think that's true? Um, the big, the big birds giving the small birds, uh, to deliver the news. I think we said that on the manga recap. That's, I think what we all think, right? Well, sure, of course. It's I mean, awesome. cause it said he, it said he's the president of the World economic journal. Yeah. Right. Which is, that's the newspaper which, that the Sora comic appears in, which yeah. we yeah. assume but, but, is the newspaper, right? Oh, I wasn't assuming that. I don't know. I, my, my, my gut says otherwise, but I can't. So well, here we go, Sam. Sure. Well, There's just other be. bird people at the head of every other newspaper. There's just yeah. a bunch of bird people. <laughs> well, the question is, and I think I, I'm going to answer my own question, is there more than one newspaper in the One Piece world? And I think that answer is no, because we have a tyrannical world government who probably controls the means of uh, journalism right. and, and communication. Uh, bird people. Anyway, uh, let's go to Reddit, which apparently I am also reading this week. Uh, so the first one <laughs> comes <laughs> from uh, John Gargia, who says, is, oh, well, okay, same question. It's about Morgans. Did you all ask about Morgans this week? <laughs> <laughs> Morgans Birdman, attorney at sea. <laughs> oh, no, reporter it. at sea, reporter at sea. Morgan. Mm -hmm. What did you say? Morgan's what, what, bird what kind of What kind of law did you practice? Uh, maritime law. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Journal. Uh, <sighs> this is terrible, but I'm writing it down. Um, <laughs> so the next question is not about Morgan's. Uh, and that is from Quirk2812. Last week, you guys talked about Kaido and whether he could have an Oni or a dragon fruit. So I want to chime in, this person, not me. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if Kaido is a dragon who eats the human-human fruit model Oni? Uh, I didn't come up with this, just heard it somewhere. I'm not sure if an Oni counts as a human, but at least they are humanoid. Oni is not a real thing. Anyway, so who cares? It'd be more like a mythical devil fruit, like uh, Marco's Phoenix power. Or like Sengoku's Buddha, yeah. Right. Which is technically a human fruit, but it's just humanoid, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. I think like it's Kaido, right? I like the idea uh, of Kaido yeah. being like not a human originally. He's a dragon. That yeah. would make him, what did he say? He's the strongest creature, I think. Was yeah. This? Yeah. I, yeah I and like he has a connection. He, has a, he had a connection to uh, Plunk Hazard, right? Where the artificial dragons were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Uh, Newt Neff, Newt Niffs? I, I don't know. I, I'm not Stephen. I can't, I'm not going to even try. Uh, no, it's, it's, so it's Nutton FFS. I'm not going to say the bad word because we Disney, but like FFS stands for, for F's sake. So it's like uh, Nutton for F's sake. Okay. Um, 
So he has one question about Morgans, and I'm not going to ask because we've already talked about it, but he does have a question about Umit, who is the second favorite of mine. Uh, He says maybe Umit has some relations with the Gali Law Company, with him being a shipping magnate. What do you guys think? Uh, I doubt it. If only Mm -hmm. because uh, Iceberg is such a stand-up dude, I feel like he really, like, if he gets a bad feeling about someone who might, like, try to do something to like get a better deal. I don't think he would actually even enter in business with them. Nah, but like iceberg had no problem selling ships to pirates. And most pirates aren't great mm-hmm. people. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah. I think bunny's money. Maybe. Uh, next one comes from Osna two, three, five. Is there some significance with the pose in which the third commander was revealed? Uh, Gladius Bastille and smoothie were all in the same pose when they were introduced. I'm going to answer this right now. They're the most anime. Um, and (laughs) yeah yeah. do do you guys have an opinion as to why that pose I think it's just a cool looking pose right yeah I think it's just a cool pose thumbs up Um, next one comes from Morek who says is Zunesha a contender for Kaido's title as the strongest creature alive I just like getting into ancient weapons speculation, but I'm having a hard time reconciling Zunesha's beatdown of Jack with the incredible strength needed to gain an 800 plus million bounty with the sweet commanders. The elephant just seems like a loose cannon in terms of strength, and I'm only really seeing an immediate comparison to the Sea Kings in that regard. Well, speaking of Sea Kings, well, why isn't Shirahoshi up for discussion here? Like, she can control the Sea Kings. Are we just talking about physical strength or, well, like, the ability to... People don't know that she could control Sea Kings, and I'm sure when Kaido got his name, strongest creature in the world, people weren't like, but what about that Shiohoshi, who's also Poseidon and could control all the Sea (laughs) Kings? Well, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about what we know. I'm not talking about, like, civilian. Right, because that's what the question is, right? I guess so. The question is, based on what we know, is there, are there creatures stronger than Kaido? I, I would go and say maybe. We don't know anything about Kaido's abilities yet. He might be able to take down Zunesha in one punch. He could be the Saitama of uh, One Piece. Who knows? <laughs> we don't know because we haven't seen it at this point. Except maybe, the fact- maybe Zunesha is uh, the the thing that's finally going to kill Kaido. It's the thing he's been waiting for. Um, all right. Probably not. But not the yell lay there and let it step on him. <laughs> <laughs> I just am- <laughs> so I'm sorry. This image in my head of Kaido laying on like the seafloor, going, "Step on me, Daddy!" And then you see this on the- so <laughs> He's down there with, um, with Jack. 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 Yeah. Jack. <laughs> Gunther. Gunther. C- I'm going to move on. Gunther C. Perk ninety seven uh, has, has a really good question here. Uh, since. Uh, since pudding could could pudding alter Katakuri's memories? Since Katakuri would know about it beforehand. <laughs> oh God, that's a real like Mobius strip kind of question. There, <laughs> you have to be quick. He only gets a few seconds in advance, but maybe if he's sleeping or something, maybe like if she sneaks into his room and rips out the memories when he's sleeping. But like, how would he? Do you think it works when he's sleeping, like in his dreams? But it's still like he's only a few seconds beforehand. <laughs> Like what yeah. he would just he would just see in the future of him sleeping some more. I don't know. It's very confusing. Um, they never went through it uh, in JoJo very specifically, so I have no uh, basis to figure that out. Uh, so next one comes from Prince of Assassins, who says salutations, One Piece podcast. In today's chapter, we learn that Jim Bay still has a uh, his death wish to throw away his life to help Luffy. A lot of people who don't remember like uh, that Jim Bay in the first place. Uh, had fools. What? <laughs> a lot of people who don't like Jimbe in the first place are fools. Uh, say it's a death flag and he won't join, but I saw it as a parallel to Sanji and then remember Brooke's quote about only a fool plans to die. Hey, speaking of fools. And uh, Aladine uh, mentions this particular trait uh, in regards to Jimbe. I Oh, Aladdin. I, she spelt it Can I call you way. Al or maybe just in? How about Letty? Here, boy. Here, Letty. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, in the flashback, I don't remember him exhibiting this trait as much, even though he still had a wish to protect his crew and the kingdom. He did, uh, just to add on here, uh, he did risk his life for Luffy on multiple occasions in Marineford, including getting a magma fist, uh, as I recall. 
but not like aced. It wasn't quite that uh, quite that bad. Uh, do you guys have any opinions? We talked a little bit about this. I mean, uh, Luffy's not going to let him sacrifice himself. It's just not going to happen. I agree with Joe. Like, he might try. It's just not going to happen. I'm trying to figure out why Jinbei, like thematically, why would Jinbei be an exception to like the nobody dies rule here? This yeah, is a thing that know. doesn't add up to me I, at all. I, I don't get it. I, I don't think Luffy needs that motivation at this point in the story either for Jinbei to die. I, like, I don't see how it would serve the story. It's gear uh, fifth right there. Jinbei dies and Luffy goes gear fifth. Yeah, I, it's not. It's not Dragon Ball Z. How many times <laughs> do we have to tell you that, Roger? We're, we're, it's One Piece. It's uh, more no, like no. Dragon Ball Super. Actually. To be fair, yes. That's right. But I, I, I don't think at any point in One Piece someone's gotten angry and powered up. In fact, I think Luffy's Sanji. usually. Well, that was fear, um, if I recall. No, he's been angry anytime anyone, you know. What and uh, when he found out that uh, Nami was going to get married in Thriller Bark. Yeah, but Sanji's not going to care if Junpei does. I mean, he'll care, but he won't care that much. Oh, I'm just saying. <laughs> he, he powered up when he was angry. There was even the DBZ sound effect and everything. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, Eleven Orange Blue asks, uh, to put it very succinctly, do you think Madam Shirley's prediction power is a highly developed form of this kind of observation hockey? Yes. Oh, that's cool. That'd be super cool. It seems like you got agreement here. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, we've seen people born with hockey um, before. Yeah, so, sometimes um, they're born with it. Sometimes it's Maybelline. <laughs> um. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. I was just gonna say sometimes you're born with it. Maybe it's Jelly Bean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta write that one down too. Uh. <laughs> Do you think he uses the jelly beans like crystal balls? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next one. <laughs> do you think that Luffy? Uh, this one's this one's from Uma Double Twelve. Do you think that Luffy will beat Commander Katakuri? And after that, when Luffy and his allies try to escape from Whole Cake Island, enraged Big Mom will try and stop them with her very strong attack, similar to what Magellan did in Impel Down. And then Luffy will use some si- sort of attack to incapacitate her for a moment and escape. That's very specific. Um, it's gonna anything. be hard for her to do that when she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes you just assume well, everything goes to plan. Sure. I, he, she's not dying. <laughs> I think Katakuri, and I forgot to mention this in the manga recap, I think seeing his power and his ability and his strength is important. Is an important reminder to the audience, do not underestimate these people. They are, right. there's a reason she is an emperor, and, yeah. her, and her support, mm-hmm. if this is her subordinate, She's probably much crazier and and more difficult to defeat. Um, Right. And like, I'm thinking back because it felt like a pretty impressive feat that Luffy was able to beat Cracker. Um, I don't know. Like if if Luffy beat another person of that level in this arc, would that feel right? I don't know. He needs to. He needs to get to that point or else we're not moving forward. He needs to beat Mm. Kaido. Like there's, I know. I think Oda said something along the well, lines I think, of, I, think, "I don't but know." I think there's going to be a lot. I think there's going to be a lot of struggle up until the point where Luffy beats Kaido. Like I think that's well. First, he has to uh, at least win here uh, or escape. Yeah, he's just he, he. The only real goal I see for these, these characters right now is just like surviving. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oda said he doesn't know how Luffy's going to defeat Kaido yet. <laughs> so it's he, there's a long way to go. And to be fair, I don't know how I would even imagine that happening. On the other hand, I don't know anything about Kaido, as we mentioned earlier. Trip him, falls into he the goes ocean. gear we five, win. Zach. I think he needs to go to, like, gear 30, um, <laughs> which I haven't seen a car with recently, so I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, oh, he, semi-truck, maybe. He goes hybrid. Um, it's energy efficient. <laughs> Capone bangs kid uh, 30 times. What? That is what? the name what? of this. That's the name of this person. What in the world? Oh, that's their name. <laughs> that's their name. Capone Banks K Thirty X. No, thank you. <laughs> wow. Do you think? Do you think Capone has Caesar's fake heart because Law didn't give Caesar's real heart back, and we never saw anyone uh, squeezing it to undoubtedly prove the heart really belongs to Caesar? That is incorrect. What? Capone that did was... seize. Yeah, Capone did squeeze the heart uh-huh. two weeks ago. And- wasn't wasn't the other hurt smokers? Was there? Yeah, I like think, it's the fake heart. 
No, the smoker wasn't heart it, was uh, a different. Monet's and, got Monet's. Monet's and smokers. Yeah, yeah, that, smoker, that's yeah. A diff- they were thinking of a the different. Smoker got his heart. back, and Monet's got stabbed. Yeah. Let's uh, I continue. Miss yeah. I miss Monet. No, you don't. I'm glad she's dead. <laughs> yeah, I loved her, but I'm just Jill, Jill. Jill, if you could see my face, I'd just be like leering. Like my eyes are squinting, just be like Jill. Okay, but would it make I... you feel better? Would it make you feel better, Sam? If your number one waifu gets Monet's devil fruit power in the future and Carrot gets the snow bunny fruit. Because I think then you would actually feel better about it. I would not care if she got a devil fruit. I I don't know. Monet's not dead. Monet, uh, she got stabbed through the heart. Like things happen in one piece. piece. But you don't get stabbed through heart and then blown up and not be seen in like an arc that would have been probably you mentioned a few times. And then just... I I feel... I feel like, like if you're gonna kill one. someone off, it's better than a jelly bean through the forehead. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know, that's a pretty cool way to kill someone. Um, if you ask me. Next question comes from Fierce Alchemist. Hey, One Piece podcast. Uh, Jimbe made his. There's a lot of Jimbe questions. I skipped over a bunch, but this one's a little different. Jimbe made his intentions to join the Straw Hats very clear in this chapter. What do you think is the likelihood he will he will really become the tenth crew member by the end of this arc? Not just as part of the Luffy alliance, but actually traveling on the Thousand Sunny with them for the remainder of the manga. One to one. So 100% is what you're saying? (laughs) Yeah. 100. I put it at 80%. Um, I think it's only, very the high. only other way. The only other way that does not happen is if he dies. I feel like if he dies, then he doesn't join. But if he lives, <laughs> he's joining the Strahans. Period. Like, I mean, it's a posthumous induction, even if he does die. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I just like the thing that kind of uh, gets me is that Oda clearly wants us thinking about Jinbei joining the crew, like as an actual crew member. Uh, and if he did like anything less than that, it would be like, well, well, why, why did you? You know, butter us up so much. Mm. All right, so this is tasty. One, butter is tasty. This next question's all over the place, but there's a lot of gems in it. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna extract the gems from the question. Um, first, about smoothie squeezing out random beasts and creatures to drink. I'm guessing <laughs> is from Summer Otaku. Uh, I'm guessing since it wasn't blood and guts, it is their essence or personality. People are tasting. It reminds me of a story from an old kid's book, Sideways Stories from Wayside School. I haven't heard of it. I don't know if any of you guys have here. Um, mm. In it, really? the kids get... I, you've heard of it? I haven't heard of it. Dude, that was super popular when I was in elementary school. Jill, I am like 10 years older than you. <laughs> Sorry, I forget you're old. Uh, in, in it, the kids get ice cream named after them, and while they themselves thought their flavor was tasteless to the best friend or people who had a crush on them, it would be their favorite one. So if smoothie juiced you guys, oh that sounds so disgusting. What do you what do you think you would taste like? What do you think you would taste like? <laughs> Who's among you would be your favorite? Is that asking who's our best friend amongst us? Because that's a little <laughs> well playing favorites. Does it matter? Does like our diet affect that, or mine tastes like euros? Regret. I, I just think <laughs> Jill, Jill works in a candy shop. Hers is definitely. Oh, be yeah, candy. Jill. So much candy. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I drink an unhealthy amount of Dr Pepper every day. Nah, I'm, uh, not huge, I'm not that big a Dr Pepper fan. I'm sorry, Sam. <gasps> I just literally insulted Sam to his core. I think <laughs> his core like, being I, Dr I, Pepper. I. <laughs> Please, I, Sam. I no, no joke. I bet. So I bet. Like, there's a percentage of my blood that is Dr. Pepper. <laughs> you should get that checked out. <laughs> that's called. I I'll, I'll, I'll have a heart attack by the time I'm 25. So. Sam, that's called diabetes. <laughs> uh, any thoughts? Anyone? Uh, anyone? Anyone want to taste? Anyone? Else? You know, I'm moving on. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> side note. Uh, Summer Otaku has a side note who says. Uh, how life is different in a bird news society tagline, all the coups that's fit to print, uh, or <laughs> hot news scoops are said to be, f- uh, for the birds tweets are actual tweets. Your Facebook and RSS aren't news feeds, but bird seeds bird reporters follow actual trail of breadcrumbs to get the story. Birds following your ship are said to be good luck because if shit goes down, you can subscribe to the news, give a hefty tip, and they will bring help. Um, interesting. Sons of Stannis. 
uh, has a good question. Two weeks ago, a few of you theorized the final road Poneglyph is located in Elbaf. Any chance that it is instead part of Captain John's treasure? Would love to see that treasure bracelet that Luffy gave Buggy come back into the story in such a big way. I do that like that was, idea, too. That's a good yeah, theory. That, that was a, a theory video I did a year and a half ago. So, <laughs> Son of Stannis, go watch my theory video. Black, Mic drop. Black Noth Wind says hello, One Piece podcast i think he meant but we we're not we're not actually one piece anyway if you could ask oda to draw a cover story what would it be he says he would ask him to draw about marines in general over the two-year time skip and our adventures in space continue (laughs) i think there's a reason oh god i would love to see senior pink (laughs) you know what i bet you that is the next one you I would not be seen your pink. Well, he's so like fan popular. Although I Caribou was so. not fan popular, so I, I don't know. I really don't know. I could. I mean, it would probably be a Dressrosa character, right, Roger? So, yeah. Why not Senor Pink? And he's one of the more interesting of the Dressrosa characters. Like even not being a huge fan of him myself, I could recognize that he is one of the more interesting ones. Next one. Uh, Z- Zydoctor Zydoctor uh, said a thought I had in this chapter we always see Perospero licking a lollipop at Impel Down we saw Magellan eating poison so this made me wonder are those with paramecia powers like theirs compelled to consume the thing they create if so do you think Mr. 3 was that kid in school who ate his crayons <laughs> is that cannibalism <laughs> does Luffy eat rubber I... do you not I... <laughs> You eat ice. Fair. Well, he's not Aokiji, so it's okay. You don't know that. You don't know that, Jill. And yeah, I do wish I was. <laughs> uh, next, <laughs> next one comes from Ogru. Uh, hey, One Piece podcast. I, uh, I'm assuming that Smoothie got the screaming giraffe and the girl who stabbed 100 men from uh, Dressrosa, probably. From she he. What this person is saying is that person's probably from Dressrosa, and they're assuming that they got both of those from Montdor's books. And now an important question for you big boys and girls. Why are we, what are you, Firecrouch? Now, anyway, uh, what in the One Piece or real world would you, so this is a little different than the other question, would you want to see smoothie juice for you? So not us, but like anything or... These are such weird questions. It's really hard to answer. See, it gets awkward because she can juice people. Yeah. Um, say, uh, if she juiced koala for me, I think that'd be a okay. Uh, oh. Dear God, it's <laughs> like a little. There's a little too much like sensory image I have there. Um. Hmm. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Adam know, would. Okay. Uh, we don't have to think of people, you know. It could be a thing or an animal. Uh, Liquid Gaimon. <laughs> That's weirder. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> Dr. Pepper. She can just juice, juice Dr. Pepper for me. <laughs> just <laughs> juice of Dr. Pepper, and it's just Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you mean you want to go out and buy a Dr. Pepper? Is that what you're saying? She just gets rid of the, she just gets rid of the can for me. <laughs> <laughs> you just want smoothie to feed you a, a bottle of Dr. Pepper. No, just like I don't know, just like hang it over the head, my head or something, and then just like squeeze it right into my mouth or something. That's a waterboarding. <laughs> Pepperboarding. <laughs> okay, we have a question from Steve Yonkow, who I have to read his question because the name. Uh hello, Mr. Paul and all, even though Mr. Paul's not here. Considering Germa Double Six is supposedly based off of the Dutch, which I did not know. Do you guys I thought it was the Danish, the Legos. Anyway. Oh yeah, 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 you're right. Oh, and the and the flag is a Scandinavian flag. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you guys or gals, uh since there are now gals on, uh, think they could play an antagonistic role in the Wano arc. Perhaps Reiju's compulsion to obey Judge saves them from the poison unleashed at the wedding, and they abandon the idea of teaming up with Big Mom and instead seek revenge with the Kaido and the Shogun. What do you think? That seems like a big stretch to me. But no, I don't I, see no. them continuing after this. Not yet. Maybe later with the Reverie. Um. But not straight yeah, to Kaido. They're, and they're, they, have, they, they can go to the Reverie, which I keep forgetting. Mm-hmm. Hope we see that. Yeah, they might. Well, I think the Reverie is probably going to happen 
when this right all now, ends. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think, yeah. I think they missed their opportunity to go to the they they knew that though. They kind of said Oh, just like it feels weird that they brought that little detail up um at all. Yeah, so, I check, think Chekhov's reverie reference. Chekhov's reverie. I like I like this one. This is the last Reddit question. It's a good one. Uh Tababoon uh says, Hey One Piece Podcast. I have a theory for how the Alliance may get past Katakuri's observation hockey. What if Katakuri has a childish sense of humor? He does have jelly beans, by the way, and is very easy to crack up. And he predicts Luffy's funny entrance and starts uncontrollably laughing, <laughs> blocking his hockey and creating an opening. I realize that this is unlikely, but it seems like a joke Oda would make. A serious looking guy like Katakuri having a quirk like that. Kind of what he did with Pika. Thank you. What do you guys think? I, I'm a fan yeah. of that. Yeah. That'd be fun. I, the Pika it's very is, specific, but yeah. I like it. I think it, it would be the perfect way to kind of distract him from Luffy's... We need to see Luffy's funny entrance. I think we all agree that needs to be seen. And I, I just think it's a good want way him to, to come it. out of the cake. Me too. <laughs> Ed. Um, Ed. And now you'll say, peace the tweet. Peace the tweet. That was weird. <laughs> anyway, first question comes from Tamim D, who says, In Islam, no difference between people. A janitor <laughs> leads doctors and sergeant during prayer. <laughs> Hashtag flight to the lights. Thank you. Wait, Next time, make your question about One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> Someone check, the, the... check the hashtag. It's there. <laughs> anyway... Next question comes from Matt Nolan, who says, This is a bit ahead, but what would you guys think of when Luffy gets to Wano and is brought to Zoro, he is sitting with Killer? And for this chapter... Oh, this is two separate questions. And for this chapter, what is up with the 499 on the mortician's shoulder? Hodgman returns? I don't I don't understand that one. But we, we kind of discussed the, the, the mortician's number thing, but the, what do you guys think of like the Zoro and Killer aspect of it? A killer's sort of the wild card for me with the upcoming Wano aspect. Like we've seen Kid. We know what Kaido did with Kid. We don't really know what happened with Killer. Well, Killer is the fifth Vin Smoke child and he's on his way to Reverie <laughs> right now to report in for his family. So right. this is why we have Roger on. He knows what's going on. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> what's next Geronimo 14 says so with Katakuri's power to see into the future you guys think Capone calculated this into his plan and didn't tell Luffy sure hope so because then because if he knew about this ahead of time uh, which he did pretty important thing to yeah I feel yeah, like I mean, Capone's like, plan is suspicious to begin with there's like mm. a lot missing <laughs> A lot of ways it can go wrong. Yeah, it's. I mean, it also like Capone specifically says like, oh, his power to see into the future is the most troublesome aspect of this whole thing. He like he explicitly said it in the chapter, so I feel like he's tried to account for it. I don't know if we can though. Mm. Anyway, next one comes from Martin Linvid. <laughs> this is a question for Alex. So, um, he asks, what happened to the dude in Jammer? The dude is currently doing a. What he's working for toward an improv. Yeah, he's doing. Uh, he's in an improv troupe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He will be back. Um, I think April or May um, was mm -hmm. his uh, end date. Uh, Steve as well. Uh, Steve is not doing an improv troupe. Steve is working on a show. He should be back. I think next month. Yes. Good. Uh, and Jammer, Jammer, he he works behind the scenes mostly. He uh, and he's also to... working as an editor in chief on his website, Latino Review. I hope I got that correct. I think it's Latino Media Review, maybe LMR, something like that. Uh, anyway, check him out. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're both on Twitter. Yeah. They're they're good guys to follow on Twitter. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll have Jammer on soon. He is behind though, so I have been bothering him pretty incessantly, as <laughs> as I do with everyone who's behind. All right, Joffer Wee Sam says, "Do you think that the Vin Smoke's eyebrow shit will get revealed in this arc?" Yes, <laughs> it has to. Yeah, one hundred. Yeah, whenever we see whatever's up with Judge, yeah. right? He's gonna get his helmet knocked off at some point. I hope he just shaves. Then again, we we off. thought we were gonna see Doflamingo's eyes, so we did. We Good got point. one panel of his eye during when he woke up. It was a thing. Stephen and I talked about it. It was a There's... thing like sixteen years before the whatever. You, you get like one <laughs> shot of one Sam eye. Sam just sounds so reserved. He's like, I'm, I'm done. I'm checked out of this. It, it was Dressrosa. Who cares anymore? <laughs> right. 
Yeah, right. remember uh, Explore Zones Dead? Don't talk <laughs> yes. to me. <laughs> Never knows best asks. I like how Kanakuri oh, hey, is Kuli Kuli reference. Uh, I like how Kanakuri is dark themed and fierce, but his choice of projectiles are jelly beans. His sign fits kids crew more. And uh, just to follow up on that flat cap, Sean says, just when you thought law was the edgiest, here comes Cut a Curry with a big old bag of beans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it made me laugh. They're edgy beans. They have uh, they have sharp uh, sides. <laughs> That's <right>. sure. <laughs> okay. Um, Giggles454 says, bath scene at Capone's hinted that Chiffon and Lola are two halves of the same person. Is this Pudding's handiwork? She able to like create separate personalities? Is that what you're pl- implying here? Are they implying that Chiffon is Lola? Like what did what's the theory there? I don't know. Like we definitely met Lola. Guys, She's definitely they're, missing they're, a tooth. They're twins. It's, right. It's, yeah. yeah. That's all there is to that. Yeah. Okay. I think. Uh, um Two's MK says, Do you think Drug Peklo and Killer from the Captain Kid Pirates are somehow connected? They do have a similar theme. The, the very heavy metal, the like the although Piccolo has the like the tears, the tears of the clown, and like the stars. He's very, very clown makeup more than, so than I think heavy metal makeup. Yeah, he's more insane clown posse than <laughs> he's a chuckalo. <laughs> he is. <laughs> there we go. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. He's Jug wasn't there, Piccolo. Wasn't there like a sad Italian clown as one of the background Pagliacci. characters during Pagliacci, No, I, yeah. I know, I know, I know. But like during this arc, earlier this arc, wasn't there a character based on him? Well, well, Mont Dor is kind of clown-ish. No, clown but we, I could, we, I'm pretty sure we even talked about this on the podcast. Because hmm. I'm like, I rem- I gotta go look. I'll look back at the other characters that were in this arc, and I'll let you know. Okay. Next one. Nine Claw Tiger says, Sir Crocodile, number one villain to One Piece podcast, selflessly protects Puppy from the rain. So beautiful, I hope Croc keeps it. <laughs> Agreed. We did, rank him, we did rank him as the number one villain. But he's number one because he's also good. It's a weird ranking. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> let's not think about that too much. Yeah. Uh, Rahul girl says, if Bedge knew about dog tooth or cut a curry, then why Ooh, who's he- reading scanlations here? <laughs> uh, then why didn't he tell Luffy and co about him while they were plotting the plan? I guess like he isn't really, it- he isn't relying on Luffy to know about that. Although, really, it would be best served to the plan to let Luffy know pretty much everything. Like, but maybe Capone wants to keep things close to the vest. He wants to like have the ultimate, you know, level of of knowledge to protect himself more than I don't know. Did we even see the whole planning thing? We didn't like. I mean, they could be at the end, be like, "Oh, by the way, there's this guy. Where's a lot of scarves, jelly bean thing? He can see the future." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Javuz asks, what would be more profitable in Tutland, dentist or diabetes doctor? What is that? Just Wilford Brimley going around? Like, what is a diabetes <laughs> doctor? Isn't that just a doctor? A <laughs> doctor. <laughs> dentist, I think, who's probably. Dentist. Yeah. Whoever has the insulin, insulin, no me. Is make a <laughs> uh, I hope we see. I oh, That would make. That would make this arc my favorite arc if we get a guy who has the insulin fruit at the end. <laughs> it's like, okay, kids, you Why think this is drug Peklo? <laughs> <laughs> you think this is all fun and games? The only person who could save you here is me. <laughs> uh, next one from the Doctor Monkey says, "Cut a curry is too handsome for a Charlotte. You think he's covering a goofy mouth or some sort of weird facial scar? We yes. do. Talked about it all over the manga recap. Yeah." Mm-hmm. Anime Lover 1491 says, I think Katakuri's powers only see the future for who he looks at. Capone making Luffy the target so that he can shoot. That's, I like that. Hmm. It, like, it's, only, it's only able to focus it in certain areas, which kind of makes sense with the, what we know about Hagi more generally, I think. Hmm. It's focused into a point. Next one. It's Aura says, do the Straw Hats need a training arc or do you want another time skip? Strongest on the crew don't seem strong enough. I think, uh, presumably for Kaido or for Wano. Well, we don't need another time skip. I think it's just going to end up being like how it was pre time skip, where right. it would just be like, oh, here's another power that I discovered somewhere along well, yeah, the and, line. And in general, they just sort of, uh, you know, they all just sort of get stronger for no reason. Like, because ever because Luffy and Sanji, they could keep up with like Zoro's strength, but Zoro's the only one actually working out. Hmm. 
Yeah. It's just like, I don't know, it's cartoon logic sometimes with that. <laughs> it is cartoon after all. As That's long why. as they go through a bunch of stuff, we'll believe that they're stronger the next time they go through right. something. Although with Zoro, Zoro is the only one where he's like, Zoro's had it way too easy since the time skip. He's going to, I've been saying this for a couple of years at this point, but he's going to get smacked down at one point. I don't think, yeah. dis- I think that's, d- yeah. despite Dress Rosa, I don't think we've seen anyone's full potential yet. No. Mm. I'll just I, I, I do think that Wano is going to be the place to see that Zoro growth. It just yes. has to be. I mean, it's a country full of swordsmen. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Next one comes from Monkey Bo. Has everyone forgotten Pound? I did. I'm sure he's going to play a huge part in the next upcoming chapters. Yeah, we, well, pr- we briefly mentioned him last week and said how we all given, forgot about him. <laughs> Gre- giving Greg's vague tweets about Chiffon and whatnot. Yeah, Greg seems to believe Pound also is going to play a role from the Pound mm-hmm. Cake image he tweeted uh, mm-hmm. a few weeks ago. So, I, I mean, also just... It, the longer you don't see someone who was introduced in this arc, uh, you know, the more you, I would think about that. King Baum, oh. number two. He's and especially, like, <laughs> the amount of time that we spent with Pound and the amount he got to talk and, like, you know, he's important to uh, our main character's friend, Lola. So, it's there. Next one. Necro Phoenix. Logtown is the town of the beginning and the end. The prologue taking place there. What do you expect in the epilogue? I, I expect I, Luffy on the execution stand saying, I left everything in one piece. You just got to find it first. That's what is this, the Matrix? I, I just, I have a feeling like we're going to get a repeat, something with like Luffy's execution or. No, I don't. I, I don't something like that. Vogtown is Roger's beginning and end. I don't think it's our, it's, it isn't our beginning or end. Yeah, like, cause Roger was from Logtown. He was actually from there, right? Oh, that's right. That's right. He was. I think it's specific to him. Yeah. Anyway. Next question comes from 91 Ryan. I wonder which Jojo is the inspiration for Kata Curry. It's clearly Joseph, sir. Yeah, for sure. Next one. Commodore Laz says, Kata Curry is talking like he's Joseph Joestar. I got no problems with that. <laughs> what, would Answering be his, uh, what would be his stand name? Oh, man. Are there any 1960s like band names with Jelly Bean in the title. <laughs> He's the Archies. There's Green Jelly. No, no, here's my here's my stand. Sugar, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. We're done. That's it. <laughs> uh, I just I just reminded of like Homer when he's floating out to sea on the inflatable raft, and the like the tape is melting as he's listening to it. <laughs> it just gets all distorted. Okay, <laughs> we got a couple more here. We're almost done. Still Tippin 007 says, Mother Carmel is going to show up and ruin everything. The gunshot will be aimed at Carmel instead of putting shooting. Hmm? I still like, like Mother Carmel if she exists being the portrait of Dorian Gray kind of thing, which we talked a lot about last week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not as like a living creature, but as like a reflection of, of Big Mom. Yeah. I mean, Big Mom... I really don't know how old she is or how long she's been around. But she I means she does look kind of old. Well, we know but... she's well over 20 because she interacted <laughs> with Roger, and also she's definitely well over 20. Uh, <laughs> I, Wapple can't be my age. Wapple cannot be my age. I'm sorry. I'm still not over that. I'm not over that. <laughs> All right, last question. <laughs> Stacy Chan asks, can you guys have your new mascot beat the pug and call him or her Pugsy? The uh, uh, OP Pugs. OP Pugs. Yeah, we got to change our logo now. Again, we just <laughs> changed contest. it. The uh, One Piece Pug cast. The One Piece Pug cast. <laughs> That's uh, the last one. I'm not, op- I'm not opposed to that. So uh, that, that wraps us up on Peace Together. And now, Ed, you're going to say, do you want to move on to the next segment? Want to move on to the next segment? Yes. Yeah, I finally get to answer the question. Yes, Ed, I would. This has been the One Piece Podcast, episode 462 for the week of Monday, March 27th, 2017. Good episode today, you guys. This is a fun one. I am hoping that the this te- chapter was so fun. 
I'm hoping that the tea party is as good as the preamble to the tea party was because uh, it's a little crazy. Uh, so next week we're going to be back. The manga is still going on. So we're going to be back with chapter 861. Uh, Roger, you'll still be around for uh, our Alex and uh, Steve hiatus. So we'll get to go through mm-hmm. that with you and uh, a whole slew of guests, I assume. And we also have the final anime recap for the filler arc, Sam. Are you excited to uh, wrap this one up, or not excited to wrap this up? Pretty excited. They've been they've been all right so far. And I guess that yeah. means Whole Cake Island is starting in two or three weeks, probably. Yep. Look, looking forward to that. Yeah. And we don't really know if there's going to be a break for the anime after the filler, but um... I am my fingers are I mean, crossed that we're also going to be getting a new opening theme opening. kind of soon. Yeah, Thank yeah this God. Is... Yes, yes. Uh, I I don't yeah. I like the song. But I hate yeah, everything I mean, else about it. <laughs> I'm tired of it. I, I'm just tired of it. I think it's how we all feel. Um, Why can't it be more like Dragon Ball Super and have good music? Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Really good music. Ugh. Toy could do what they should be doing if they want, but they don't. Uh, we'll so- make our own. We'll make our own opening with blackjack and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. Uh, I can make that video. Roger, where could the good people out there contact you? Uh, they can follow me on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. My name is Rogers Base, R O G E R S B A S E. I just did a Reddit AMA, so if you're interested in finding out some uh, personal information about me, you can go check that AMA. I answered a bunch of questions like how I got into YouTube and what my favorite arc of One Piece is and all that great stuff. And I am less than 200 subscribers away now from 116,000, which is pretty exciting. That's a very so random number. <laughs> I know. I just I think it's pretty cool because I, I was at 115 last time I was on, which was last week. So it's oh, been, wow. like, quite a bit in one week. Yeah, I think it was because this chapter was so good. Yeah, it was a good um, chapter. Yeah. But please subscribe if you aren't already. I do one piece theories and lots of theories like killer being the fifth in smoke sun. But I don't actually believe that. But um, yeah, I do reviews of the anime and the manga every single week. And with this Saturday being the return of both Attack on Titan and and My Hero Academia and Crunchyroll, mm-hmm. I will I'm... be doing anime reviews for both of those. As well. Wait, I thought My Hero Academia was on Funimation. No, no they're both on Crunchyroll. That's both. both. Yeah. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. And more Hopefully. importantly, it is my birthday, so I get... Just like you oh. got a big... Uh, what? What Didn't the series premiere on your birthday this year, Roger? Uh, no, but Frankie, Shanks, and Mihawk were all born on my birthday, <laughs> which is March 9th. <laughs> well, I get Attack on Titan and My Hero Academia Season 2. There you go. Uh, so that that's always a good present. Um, Kelly, where could people... We th- oh, oh before that, uh, we also like to thank Jill for coming on. And definitely read her articles on the OnePiecePodcast.com, but she is having computer trouble right now. So also follow her on Twitter at PiratusUnluck. Wow, Jill, your voice changed. Very un- unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kelly, where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Karuri. And next week I'll be in Japan. So I'll be posting some pictures from that uh, Samantha Tavasa pop-up shop as well as whatever One Piece stuff I can get my hands on while I'm there. And we will likely be retweeting a lot of that. So you can uh, yeah, check out uh, Kelly's Twitter as well as our Twitter for uh, that Japan trip. And Sam, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on Twitter at Translatosaurus, and they can find me <laughs> translating the one. <laughs> I couldn't even finish the sentence. Uh, I did say Sam, right? I did not say yeah. Sam. I just want to make sure I did not mess that up. <laughs> I, was, I was doing a joke thing. Yeah, uh, you can I find me it. on Twitter at Lucky Chainsaw. You can find me doing the anime recaps on the One Piece podcast every week. And you can find me on AnimeNewsNetwork.com doing the daily streaming reviews for One Piece and Dragon Ball Super. I just want to mention again, Steven was on for the manga recap, as you may recall. He has been doing a fantastic job. If you're not subscribed to Shonen Jump, the official release, which is what we follow every week, it comes out on Mondays, the same time as it comes out in Japan. It also comes out in uh, India, I think the Philippines, a lot of the Anglosphere. And plus the Anglosphere. Uh, They added a few countries that are not, you know, the traditional Anglosphere to that. 
which is a word that I never had heard of before of this before this, but uh, it's definitely worth it. It's v- it's not very expensive. It's around twenty five dollars for a full year of Weekly Shonen Jump. That's a full year of One Piece, One Punch Man, My Hero Academia, uh, Food Wars, plus like a million other things. It's worth it. And Steven again translates it, so please check that out at shonenjump.viz.com if you haven't. Ed, I think you're going to say how the good people could contact us. How the good people could... Hey, I'm not doing this anymore. (laughs) Um, You are Zach underscore Logan on Twitter. I am Edward E. Festizio. I am tweeting about the 100 great anime films that I'm watching this year. I'm going to watch all 100 this year. Uh, Took it a little easy this last week. I only revisited the Lupin the Third movie, Castle of Cagliostro. Really great movie. And uh, good uh, good commentary from Reed Nelson on the discotheque release that came out. Uh, last year or the year before, a couple years ago. But uh, yeah, check that out. Uh, the podcast can be found at OnePiecePodcast.com, Twitter.com, YouTube.com, and Facebook.com slash OnePiecePodcast. OnePiecePodcast at gmail.com is our email address. OnePiecePodcast is our Skype name. Support us on Patreon, Patreon.com slash OnePiecePodcast. And you can also subscribe on SoundCloud, subscribe on Google Play, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, or call us on our phone number. Zach? Our phone number is 347-497-MAJI. MAJI. The phone number again is 347-497-6254. Call anytime. Anytime. With your questions, comments, theories, and jelly beans. You could also send us... Don't actually send us jelly beans, but you could send well, us... Well I, well, I do like jelly beans. You could send us your snail mail at uh, the One Piece Podcast, P.O. Box 2691, New York, New York. 1017 and our new patreon episode will be coming out this week with outtakes all our episode title discussions which are often a lot of fun and some exclusives and conversations uh that are off the air um that you could only hear on patreon again that's at patreon.com slash one piece podcast will be out before the end of the month so please subscribe before then and that's going to be it. We have an exciting few weeks coming up, I assume, as the tea party begins. So get your party hats ready, and we'll see you next week, everyone. My name is Zach. My name is Ed. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye.